TNA, we are wrestling. Feast your eyes on a living, modern marvel. <laughs> One of the great wonders of the world. I would even venture to say, the greatest. Christian Cage instant is an instant classic. Classic. Instant, instant, instant classic. classic. The Model T. Instant gone with the wind. Instant. The steam locomotive. Instant Bogart. I am the greatest thing since sliced bread. <laughs> no, 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 no. I am greater than sliced I'm bread. I'm greater than great. I'm great. I am an instant classic. I am an instant end of world I wouldn't say master of the universe. <laughs> I'd say champion <laughs> of the universe. <laughs> Unbeaten, undefeated, un undeniable time. NWA An instant, instant world classic. Champion. Class classic. Class classic. Kurt Angle. So you're an Olympic gold medalist. It's real. It's damn real. Quiet. 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 Please. Kid stuff. Kid stuff. Point system. <laughs> Please. Oh, 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 Dorothy, oh, 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 Dorothy, you're not in Kansas anymore. You see, Kurt, those big teeth guards that you wear, I think they're cutting off the circulation, the air circulation to your brain. If you think that you're anything, then merely supporting cast around here. Because I'm the man. This is my show. I am a two-time NWA World Heavyweight World Champion. champion. One of the great wonders of the world. I'm great. I'm great. I'd say champion. I'm I right. am right. an instant, an instant classic. Instant. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you instant. and good night. Classic. It's been your privilege. Be sure to tip your waitress. <laughs>
Brother Ray and man, LAX, not intimidated. They're taking it right to 3D. They don't care if it's the kind of match that 3D call for. Here comes Hernandez! Oh, 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 oh. Brother d was waiting for him. When you commit yourself to going over the top rope, for one thing, it's amazing. It's 6'6", 300 pounds. But that enables Brother Devon to take that steel chair and just drill you right in the face with, and that's exactly what we saw. Look out! Homicide! Oh, God! Back body drop by Brother Ray, and he went right into that post and with a bad landing on the arena floor. He took just a little bit too much time. Brother Ray able to get set up for it. I mean, the cameramen are in danger. Everybody's in danger. Look at that! Oh! Brother Ray misses with the chair shot as Homicide just gets out of the way and then uses the chair as a weapon himself. Oh, the gang mentality of the Latin American exchange. Let's be, oh man, Homicide coming off the apron. Brother Ray catches him in mid-move. Where's he gonna take him? Oh, right on the ramp as he just flings him over his back. And you saw Homicide take a serious hit. Now look at Brother Diva. Oh, just snap suplex. Hernandez back on that ramp. 300 pounder just dropped on his back with the suplex. Let's take another look at this. Oh, God. That was unreal as Hernandez had nowhere to run or hide at that point. He committed himself in midair, and that turned everything around for Team 3D. And now you see the garbage cans in the back alley, and you see the woman as they're strip dancing right there for Brother Ray as he's getting the whole, the whole Long Island feel right there, isn't he? Well, he lost his focus. No question about that, and he's gonna pay. Homicide, swinging the steel chair, just crashed it down right across the back of Brother Ray. Latin American exchange, you cross the line. It's one thing to fight. It's one thing to brawl here in the impact zone. But when you take that gang mentality, those thug tactics, when you take them to Brother Ray's relatives at 3D's family restaurant, you've gone way too far. And by Brother Ray fooling around with the, with the girls in the cages, that gave Homicide a chance to come over here. They did the two-on-one on, on Brother Devon, and again, LAX able to get the momentum swinging their way, and it's all LAX right now. Hernandez coming right by the broadcast position here. He's got the trash can in hand. Meanwhile, Homicide takes the wooden table, crashes it down across the back of Brother Devon. Didn't quite get a good grip on it to bring it down hard enough. But now again, you see Hernandez using that strength, setting Brother Devon up. And look at this. Oh, man, he just off the top. And the next snap back on Brother Devon as he goes back into the ring. Two what stages. A shot. Two stages to that move. Punctuated by Hernandez. Now enables Homicide to go for the pin. Gets the two count on Brother Devon. Brother Ray. Oh, pulled Hernandez out to the floor. They both went for the same move. They both went for the clothesline. They both connected and they're both down. But now Homicide's got the trash can. And he dumps the trash in the ring and oh, he just smashes the trash can right on the back of Brother Devon's head. What's he got there? Is it like a. Like a pizza cutter, I think it is. It's a pizza cutter. Well, it would make sense in a little Italy street fight, wouldn't it? Good that you point. would have a pizza cutter. Oh, nice boot right there by Homicide as he's able to counter Brother Devon. But Brother Devon goes right back at it and misses again. Homicide doubles him over. Oh! Caught him with the boot to the midsection. And then he took the pizza cutter to the top of his head. Just grinded across the forehead right there on Brother Devon and Homicide. Look at that grin on Did his face. Did you see that? Yes. Oh, he just took it and grinded it out. You, you, look you, at him pulling back God. and he's bleeding him. Oh, he's cutting him again over the top. Oh, you see the blood just dripping down, Brother Devon. Oh, that was a gruesome sight, Mike. I, I see the blood dripping down, but I also see that, that look of joy on the face of Homicide as he was taking it and slicing his head wide open. Well, they've taken this little street fight and turned it into a gang war. But there's a, look at that cheese grater in the hand to Brother Ray. So oh, right on top of the head of Homicide. What a shot. He said that we were going to go from the strip club to the back alley to the cafe. We must be in the cafe. Pizza slicer, cheese grater, whatever you can use as a weapon, of course it's legal. Oh, gets grounded right over the top of the skin. And Brother Ray right now in total control. And you said it, we've seen the garbage cans from the back alley. We've seen the girls from the strip club. Wait a minute. What the what hell? In the world, who are these guys? Look at them They're, fill up the ring. They're all in bandanas, and I mean, the referee doesn't know what to do, but look at Brother Devon and Brother Ray. They're just standing tall, and they're taking on all covers, Mike. Members of the Latino nation coming out to support LAX. What a number.
numbers game this is, but 3D fighting them all off. Finally, Homicide and Brother Ray. A oh, quick takeover here by Homicide. What a distraction here by that Latino nation. I mean, you've got to give credit to Team 3D as they were able to defend themselves against all those from the Latino nation. Now, Brother Ray, oh, scoop slams down Homicide. And look at this, they were able to fight it off. And now they're setting up Brother Devon to see if he can come off the top and place that head perfectly. What do you think? Can he put this baby through the uprights? Here he goes! Oh, he smashes the head! Perfect shot! Bloody Brother Devon connects off the top rope. Big Hernandez back in. He's drilled right down to the floor by Brother Ray. You ready? Are you ready for this? You hear it, and you hear the crowd calling for the tables, and I don't think they're talking about the tables that were set up in the ring at the beginning, Mike, as you see Brother Devon pulling them out. The trademark, the signature of Team 3D. Yes, Brother Ray, Brother Devon. The fans said get the tables, and they're about ready to oblige. Brother Ray's going to stack it up in mid-ring. I'm so impressed with Team 3D right now as the crowd getting so full behind them as they were able to, to hold off the onslaught of the Latino nation. We didn't even see them coming. They came from nowhere. The blood dripping down Devon's face. Hernandez trying to come back in for a double clothesline, but no, didn't have enough. Scoop and slam by Brother Ray. Powers, big Hernandez down. Devon gonna go to the well a second time. Oh, he wants to make sure that Hernandez gets the same thing that Homicide got. Look at that bloody face of Brother Devon, and here he goes up top. He's set, and wait a minute, he went outside of the ring. Those are some members, I believe, of the Latino Nation that came back into the battle. Absolutely the case. Devon says we'll take care of them. We'll take them out. Here's Homicide off the top. Catches it with the Hurricane Rana there. Brother Ray gets up, goes for a close line, but he doesn't have it. What a shot with the lid of the garbage can by Homicide. Oh, he just crashed it right over the top of Brother Ray's head. Oh, and there's one for Brother Devon as well. as. Homicide is swinging that all, and they just put Brother Ray right through the table. Hernandez just put him right through the wood. Be careful what you ask. Oh, what an elbow drop by Homicide. They got it. Two. Go, oh, Brother Ray got the shoulder up just in time. Wow. I didn't expect that. Just a two count. Amazing near fall, but LAX, nope, they can't put it away. Action continues in the Little Italy street fight. Look yeah. at the strength of Brother Devon when you toss out Hernandez. You're doing something in it. Look at this. Oh, saving grace right there by Brother Devon. One, two, got it. No, Homicide got the shoulder up just in time. Oh, how close can you be to gaining the ultimate in revenge here against the Latin American exchange? But amazingly, Homicide, nope, powered out before the three count. You see Brother Ray still knocked out after that table shot. It's now. Brother Devon and Homicide, but you can see some life in Brother Ray right there in the foreground. And look, wait a minute, the Latino Nation now grabbing the legs of Brother Devon. Oh, no question. LAX has the strength in numbers here. They've got, I can't believe this, these Latino Nation members, but again, there's no disqualification in this match. Look out! A border oh, toss! Border toss on Brother Devon! Pin! Got it with help from Homicide! <laughs> They just kept bringing members of the Latino East Nation out. Look how happy he is as he looks on from the wheelchair. He just kept sacrificing bodies. He knew the more he threw out, then the more the Team 3D would be occupied with, and that the moment of LAX would come, and it did. Brother Ray not able to get up from going through that table in time, and then Brother Devon, he again, the numbers game took it to him, and man, that border toss followed by the elbow drop. I still can't believe that he got Brother Devon and tossed him across the ring with that border toss. This Hernandez is incredibly strong. Well, we've heard from so many people that he's the strongest guy that they've been in the ring with. The guy is unbelievable and showed it especially after everything he went through. Let's go to our broadcast partner, JB, standing by with Austin Starr. We are off and running tonight here at Against All Odds and coming up next, it's X Division action as the Austin Star goes one-on-one -on -one with the Warrior Senshi. And are you in for a treat, Jeremy Boras, because tonight, finally, the Austin Star gets his chance to shine. You see, when I came here, it was with one purpose, to tell you people something I've known a long time, that pound for pound, I'm the most complete wrestler here in TNA. 
But you see, when I got here, Kevin Nash sidetracked me with his games and his shenanigans, along with that warrior, Senshi. You know, Senshi, you call yourself a warrior. You know, warrior, you're simply a parody of a warrior. A true warrior is a man like David Carradine from Kung Fu. You remember that? Yeah. So great. Excuse me, can I help you? Mr. Backland? Look at you, you look like a grown-up Opie. Let me tell you something, Mr. Backland. If you put your hands on me like you did the Final Resolution again, I'm gonna physically change your channel. I'm out of here. Young man, have you ever heard of the word impromptu tubability? Was that young man trying to exacerbate me with his discourse, young man? Well, I can get a little out of hand myself when need be, young man. I still can't figure out exactly what Mr. Backlund's up to. Austin Starr seemed to be distracted by Backlund. He better concentrate on his opponent in this matchup, the Warrior Senshi. Ladies and gentlemen, the next contest is scheduled for one fall. Introducing first, from TV Land, the Austin Starr. He picked the fight with Senji and it's not stopped. And you wonder what he was thinking when he did it, but he was so frustrated what happened in the Paparazzi Championship Series, Mike, that he felt like, you know what? I want to be noticed, and he's going to go after the former X Division champion. And his opponent from Brooklyn, New York, Senji! From the moment that he arrived in TNA, Senshi has amazed us with his ability to use his feet in such incredibly different modes of striking. You've got to be prepared at all times because Senshi will catch you with moves using those feet, those stiff lethal kicks, unlike anyone in professional wrestling today. You can't see him coming. I mean, they come from out of nowhere. We talk about it, nobody in the history of TNA, and I mean that includes even like the phenomenal AJ Styles. Nobody can use their feet, both of them, the way that Senshi can. He is unbelievable. They really are weapons that he brings into the ring, and you have to be aware of them at all times. Austin Starr trying to rifle off those elbow shots in the corner, those forearms, quickly turned around by Senshi, but then reversed again by Starr. Shot off, oh man, back first right into the turnbuckles, and then the high hip toss takeover by Senshi, takes him up, mid-ring slam, powered him down, springs off the ropes, corkscrew style elbow, here's the quick pin. Senshi gonna go for the win here in the opening minute. He's so fluid, Mike, he's just so fluid how he does it, it's just like a cat out there in the ring. I mean, he just comes off the ropes. It's certain angles and he misses there, but look at this. He's always got his eyes. He's so intense. And what a chop right there by Sid G is. Austin Starr's just not able to get on track. Well, we were talking about this earlier, the distraction in the back by Mr. Backlund. The distraction right there. Austin Starr falls prey to that a second time. Then the drop kick leads to a pin attempt here. And another opportunity for Senshi, but can't quite get the three count here on Austin Starr. He's gonna have to stay more focused in this match. He can't worry about Mr. Backlund. Nice move right there by the Austin Star, but he thought he sent Cinchy all the way to the floor, which he didn't, and now see, oh! Nice counter there by the Austin Star, and let's say that about Austin Star. Don't underestimate his in-ring ability, because he really is something. Wow! Suicide dive right through the ropes, right on the Cinchy into the rail, Mike. You see that suicide dive the way when he made contact, how he put his shoulder right into the body of Cinchy. We're gonna try and take another look at that suicide dive if we can. Here it is, look at that. Oh, it gives him so much more force and it then it protects him from injury as well as he just used it straight through the shoulder into the rail. And at the same time, exactly what you said. When he hits you with that suicide dive, he drove Senshi back first right into the unprotected steel. From the outside, slingshot in. Wow. Oh, man. What a unbelievable there by the Austin Star. Like I said, do not question his in-ring ability because he can do some amazing things. And this is how you beat Senshi. You knock the air out of him. You get it to where he's discombobulated out there in the ring. And you, you, you basically 
are the judge of the pace, and that's what Austin Starr is doing right now. I've just received word that our broadcast colleague, Jeremy Borash, is backstage and against all odds, attempting to get an interview with the NWA World Heavyweight Champion, Christian Cage, and after what we've seen between Scott Steiner and Tomko, I'd love to hear what Christian Cage has to say about that. Didn't seem to me, judging by the arrival of those two on the pre-show, that Tom Cohen and Big Papa Pump were necessarily seeing eye to eye. Well, you know Big Papa Pump as well as anybody. I mean, think about the years that you've gotten to see him, and has he ever really gotten along with anybody? Hardly. You know, for a while, his brother. For a while. <laughs> Just for a while. Right now, the Austin Star has taken total control of this ever since the shoulder block through the ropes. And since she just, look at him, he's frustrated, he's in pain, he can't get his offense going. Unbelievable how the Austin Star is taking control of this match. See what Austin Star just did there? He grabs Sin Chi with bo by both ears, of all things. And now adding a little extra torture here, putting his leg right across the throat of Sin Chi, yes, the former X Division champion. And he does it in a way that is so flashy that it's humiliating. I mean, it, he's doing it to where it looks like it's at ease, like he can do it at any time. And somebody like Sin Chi, who takes so much pride, you know that humiliates him, and obviously, it's got him motivated to get up firing, but Austin Starr right back with the elbow. One, two, three, four, right on top of the forehead. We, we talked about the strikes of Senshi, and while we centered on, oh man, his ability to use his legs and his feet, we just saw the lefts and the rights, but Austin Starr, amazingly enough, able to turn it around on Senshi, and oh, you heard the reaction of that chop to the chest. I mean, you know, normally it's Senshi that does those wicked knife edge chops. But that one there by Austin Starr now. Is he setting up for this pendulum elbow? That's exactly oh, what he's doing. He hits do. this with such force. It is unrolled, but he misses. Since she countered it, was able to time it and got up just in time. For several months here in TNA, Austin Starr has been connecting on that pendulum elbow. I think the opposition starting to scout that pendulum move. And Senshi able to avoid the contact, but he didn't avoid that big knee right into the gut. Here's a gut wrench into a power bomb. Pin. Two. She got it. No. Senshi able to kick out of it. I mean, he is using his power. He has countered everything that Senshi's known for. Senshi likes space. He likes to be able to move around. He likes to be able to use those feet and get you from different directions. Austin Starr has completely taken that game away from Senshi, and Senshi's frustrated. He can't get grounded right now. He cannot find an opening, Mike. Look at the cockiness and confidence from Austin Starr. The open hand slap and a second time. Paint brushing, slapping the face of the warrior Sen Chi may not be a good move here if Sen Chi can ever get on track. Oh, now he's just berating Sen Chi. Bad mouthing yeah. him. And, and again, Sen Chi is one of those that it's all about concentration for him. And if you get that concentration broke, you've got a chance. But if he gets focused, and it looks like he is, oh, just leveled star. That could be the first move to mount a comeback. Yes, the clothesline drops him. There's one of the kicks. There's another kick. Oh, that one rocked him, cut him on the side of the head. And the third one drilled him as well, right in the ear. Austin Starr got too cocky. You mentioned it, Mike. He got too cocky, and he gave Cinchy breathing room, and now he's using those feet like extensions of his body. I mean, it's just unreal. They come from nowhere. Oh, hooked him and that everywhere. last time. Really caught him in the back of the head with the kick. The warrior for the cup. One, Cinchy two. on top for a two count. Star able to just kick out in time, but since she, you can just feel it. You can see it coming back in him. You know what I mean? He's He's got that look again, and now look at him go with the chops. Wow. One after the other, lighten up the chest of Austin Star. Oh, oh, man, those knife edge chops. Here goes Austin Star for the ride. Quick reversal, since she springs back off the middle rope. We talked about the kicks, how stiff, how lethal they were, just like that one. Austin Star down. Here's the pin. One, two. Oh, Star pushes him off. But think about what Cinchi did there. It was like he hesitated in midair so that he can look and see where he actually needed to place the kick. I mean, that is unbelievable dexterity that he shows. There's another kick, that one, the boot, right to the side of the head. Oh, he's got Austin Star in trouble here. Let's see if Cinchi can put him away. Gonna try and take him up into the air for a brain buster or a suplex. It was blocked twice by Star. Cinchi answers with the chop shot off into the ropes here comes Cinchi charging in caught in no man's land right on that middle rope Austin Starr gonna try and take him up now suplex attempt is blocked by Cinchi blocked the second time by Cinchi oh! just tilt the world there I mean it's unreal just somersaults it right over catches it right on the top of the head again you never see it coming 
Warrior moved that time. Oh, look at this. Submission hold up. Fight. He's got that cross face now. He's got it on. I wonder if he's sending a message to Mr. Backlund with this, you think? No, obviously, it's somebody that's gotten under his skin, but it is a very viable weapon. And you can see Sinchi is, is wrenching the neck and trying to get himself straightened out. And look at Sinchi. He's just kind of stuck on the inside. But oh, comes right back to that drop kick. Check that drop kick out. Caught him with both boots right in the chest. Stood him up in the corner. The Warrior to the top. Could this be the Warrior's way, that double boot? Oh, he misses. It's Austin Starr able to, to get out of the way just in time, knowing that if he hits it, it's over, Mike. Oh, you're right. When he connects with that Warrior's way off the top, it is a one, two, three. Starr going to bring him back in again. Cross face again. Yeah, exactly. Well, it worked the last time. He just wrenches Cincy's head and and pulls it back and forth. Think of the pain that causes to the neck. Think of, you know, everything that it does. And again, Cincy, Roll oh, up. he's got him. Two and no. Oh, wait a minute. Another oh, two count the here. Bridge. One, two and. Oh, so. Well, he got the three count. But, I, I mean, I, both, I, both wrestlers' shoulders were down for the three count. I mean, you could see both of them down. I, I, don't, I think Austin Starr might have gotten the win there as Cincy. I wonder if we can see that. Let's hear it from the ring announcer. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, your winner is Cincy. Oh, Cincy didn't get the pin as Austin Starr wasn't able to get his shoulder up in time. You're right, just before senior official Rudy Charles counted three, Cincy gets his shoulder up and Cincy victorious. One of those weird situations, Mike, where both guys' shoulders were placed on the mat at the same Wait a minute. Austin Starr just grabbed the chair and threw it at the ring, and he's, he's showing his frustration right here. But then she got the win in the eyes of referee Rudy Charles. And I, I, well, he's gone nuts here. Clearing out the front row, clearing out ringside, now going underneath the ring, and he's filling up the chair with steel chairs out of frustration. This is shades of Bobby Knight. I'm gonna tell you, I, I believe Austin Starr felt that he was able to rotate just enough to where Cincy's shoulders were planted on the map. And I think he thought the referee saw it, but the referee saw his shoulders down and he didn't get his up in time. Picked up a microphone, let's hear what he has to say. Let's hear from Austin Starr. Shut up! I demand this match is restarted. I demand someone from the back gets out here and restarts this match. Wanting to get it restarted, he hey, is just furious. I will come and throw each and every chair that you're all sitting in in this ring. Unless someone gets out here. Oh, he snapped. He's just had demanding for someone to come out here. I want someone out here right now with the authority to restart this match. Now. He is just intent on having this thing restarted, but since he, he's long gone as he got the win. I understand his frustration, but bottom line, you got beat. Your shoulders were down for a three count. Yeah, it was a photo line, finish. Baby. I'm getting paid to sit here. Oh, wait a minute. Oh. What the? I mean, he wanted somebody out of here. I mean, their paths crossed at our final resolution pay-per-view, and here's Mr. Backlund in the ring. Look at this getting right in Austin Starr's face. I'm, I'm, we're probably glad we can't hear what he's saying because I don't know if we can understand it. Well, look at Austin Starr, he's got his hands up and, and it's almost like Bob Backlund is just complete. Well, he just slapped him and slapped him again. Uh-oh, here it is. Cross face chicken wing applied by Backlund, his signature move. And he does it with so much more force than even Austin Starr was doing it earlier. Austin. And look at this, Austin Starr screaming in pain. Oh. Look at this, he's got the cross face chicken wing on him right by the broadcast table, and he's taking Austin Starr right out of the building. We're gonna send it to the back, JB in the locker room of Christian Cage. I'm in the locker room of the current NWA heavyweight champion of the world, Christian Cage, set to defend the championship tonight in the main event against Kurt Angle one-on-one. -on -one. This has to be your toughest challenge to date. Well, uh, hey, what's your problem now? You know what? I'll tell you. I'm trying to do an interview. I will tell you what my problem is. This guy is a freaking egomaniac. I have never met somebody so full of himself. Not even you, my friend. What? He is worse than my old lady. You know what? You're going to set him straight. You let him know that the pecking order around here is you, me, and then him. I could care less how big his freaking arms are. 
Either you set him straight, Christian, or I'm going whoa, to. Whoa, 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 Christian. The deal's off. What do you mean he's I'm not working with this muscle-bound idiot anymore. You said if I wanted my shoes shine, he would shine them. This, this idiot can't do nothing. He can't perform simple tasks. Clean my glasses. Clean my glasses, no, bitch. No, no, no. Hey, come on, guys. Oh, listen, guys. you brought me in because you wanted to beat Angle. You want me to show you how. I'll show you how. But I'm not working with this moron redneck anymore. Scotty, come on. Everybody just calm down, man. Calm down. All right? Tomko's a little bit irritable lately. Listen, he's not, he's not used to waiting on people hand and foot. Scotty, you're the exception to the rule, man. Let's not lose focus on what the task is here. It's Kurt Angle. And the way that I see it, and the way that you know that it is, he took your spot here in TNA. He took your big fat paycheck. He took food from your kid's mouth, Scotty. Why? Why? Are his kids better than yours? That's the question I want to know. This is about Kurt Angle. All right, now, 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 Tomko, apologize to Scotty for your bad attitude. You apologize. You no, I don't me. want his redneck apology because they mean nothing to me. Listen, I know what the deal is, and it's changing by the second. I'm starting to want you. As bad as I want angle. Hey, 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 everything's falling apart here, man. Listen. What? What are you just standing here for? Go fix it right now. You gotta be kidding. No, I got a title to defend. Get the hell out of here. Get the hell out of here, too. And hello once again, everyone from Ringside Mike today, joined by Don West at Against All Odds. I think it's safe to say, DW, there's a little dissension with Team Christian. Well, I mean, we talked about it earlier. I mean, you're expecting Scott Steiner and Tomko to get along, and then you wonder if Christian maybe bit off a little more than he could chew by bringing Steiner in as a special consultant. Volatile situation, no question about that. Still on deck tonight, and against all odds, it's a Motor City chain match. The phenomenal AJ Styles to square off against the War Machine Rhino. Two championship matchups at the pay-per-view tonight, including the X Division title on the line. The pioneer, Jerry Lynn, to challenge the champ, Chris Saban. And it's gonna be a prison yard match. It's Sting against Abyss with, of course, James Mitchell at his side. The winner is the one that puts his opponent in the solitary confinement cage. And then you've got the world championship. You've got Kurt Angle taking on the champion, Christian Cage. And remember, Samoa Joe, the unofficial special enforcer. You wonder how Steiner and Tomko is gonna play out in this world championship match with Joe out there. Good point. You think they're gonna be able to coexist? I mean, what we just saw in the back, the friction, the dissension Ego's on the part big. of Christian Cage, Tomko, Scott Steiner, you may have hit it right on the head. Ego's just way too big. Christy Hemi, the TNA knockout. She feels like there's a place for women in the six-sided ring. You know, I wonder who Jim Cornette from TNA Management has picked as her opponent tonight. Let's find out. Let's review the history of Christy Hemi in TNA. What we saw happen, the pay-per-view last Sunday was definitely a different side of it. I came from another company, too. I did everything that a good employee is supposed to do, except I wouldn't lay down to get ahead and compromise the woman that I am, the person that I am. Let me tell you something, you little slut. No, I don't think it's the Maybe you should all. just go back to that strip club you got fired at. Women deserve respect, and we do not have to lay down for anybody, ever. All right, all right, all right, all right. No, Girls are good for two things. You know, you wanted to be treated equal, right? You're right! We are only good for two things. Our bodies and putting men back in line when they step out! I don't know if you know about that ladder success. Before you go up, you gotta go around. That is exactly what I'm talking I'm about! Done. I'm done! I absolutely demand a public apology, and if you can't give it to me, I want you terminated! You want your apology? There it well, is! That's what I'm talking about! Yes, yes, you in the yes. business. And against all odds, it's a pay-per-view, you're gonna wrestle. Hey, it's my opponent! To be determined! Ladies and gentlemen, this is a tuxedo match. It is one when a wrestler strips their opponent of all parts of their tuxedo attire. Introducing first from Los Angeles, California, Christine Hemme! She wants equal treatment. She wants her opportunity to show that there is a place for women in the six-sided ring earlier tonight on the pre-show. Jim Cornette laid down the law to Christy Hemme. 
Well, you know, Christy, you want a lot of things. You want to be a professional wrestler. You want to be treated equal. You want to give me a migraine headache with that screeching voice of yours, complaining all the time. So I'll tell you what, I'm not going to tell you who you're wrestling tonight, but I'll tell you what kind of match you've got. Very simple. A tuxedo match. You and your opponent are going to wear tuxedos, and the way you win the match is to rip the tuxedo off your opponent completely. Capiche? <laughs> Gosh, the disgusting judge that was here for the PCS. Big fat oily guy. Be careful what you wish for, Christy Hemi, because you might surely get it. Oh no. That's your thought exactly. No, actually my thought, I was I was kind of jumping ahead. And I was considering the rules for this tuxedo match. You win the match oh. when you strip your opponent of all the parts of their tuxedo attire. Oh, there's a little wake-up call. Is it bad to be guy. rooting for the big fat oily guy in this Are situation? You I do not want to see him with his tuxedo off. We saw enough of that. Well, the jacket's off already. Look at Christy. I'll tell you what, she's showing fire, though. Well, you're not kidding. I mean, this is important to her. Let's, let's not belittle that. This is important to her. But, oh, she goes a little, showing some Incredible speed right there is the big fat only guy, and he's able to pull off the jacket. One to one here. Jackets are both off in the tuxedo match, but look at Christy go to the mount. I mean, a well, distinct part, size part, advantage. Pardon the expression. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. no. Folks, we got good news and bad news at this point. I mean, we all love Christy Hemi, but when the end result is taking a look at the big fat oily guy without his shirt, I'm not sure we're winners at this point. But I'll tell you something, she decided if this is what Jim Cornette's gonna throw at her, that whoa. she's gonna go after it. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, so I hope whoa. he's got, well, we need some suspenders out suspenders? here. Suspenders? Somebody break some suspenders, I don't want their pants coming down. You're not kidding, you talk about a wardrobe malfunction, that's the last thing we need. And look at Christy Hemby, I mean, she's going right after it. Yeah, but she, I mean, oh, 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 look at right there. Four one for the big fat Lily guy, and but I mean, if you're cheering for Christy Hemi, well, I don't know, well, but you, Scotty, you, keep the camera there on Christy, please. You, you, oh, what a shot! But if you're cheering for Christy Hemi, you know that she's going to try and take his pants off next. Well, I'll oh, tell you what. For the love of God. Oh man, just picking her up, setting her down, and trying to keep his pants off. Yep, that must be jelly, because jam don't shake like that. Oh man, that's no marmalade I ever want, but. Christy Hemi at the size advantage is just too much for her out there. It's marmalade. I, I give her credit that's, for... That's no strawberry preserves, <laughs> big boy. Oh, oh, gee whiz. Good Lord. Oh, thank goodness for that shot. Oh, nice knee right there by Christy Hemi. It's, she's trying to get the momentum back, but looks like a shoelace has gone there on one of her... Oh, oh no. Oh, oh no. God. No. Oh, gee, oh. No. stop. No. No. This Don't is... want that visual in my mind. Oh, that you that was like bad porn. Oh. 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 <laughs> Christy with the low blow. Oh, oh, Christy, stop! Somebody ring a bell! Please! Holy gentlemen, your winner, Christy Hemi! Well, Jim Cornette gave her the match and she came out victorious! He took what he sent out there at her. You got to give her credit for that. She didn't back down for a minute, Mike. Yeah, thanks a lot, Jim. No, oh, oh, no, no, already. We can't see we, it. Can't we get a shot of Christy celebrating? Oh, fire that oh, cameraman. God. Fire that cameraman. Wait, Christy's, Christy's got the stick. Is that what you wanted, JD? Is that what you wanted? Impressive! A big fat only guy you just beat him. Now that took talent. 
<laughs> but you know what? That's not what these people came to see. That's for sure. Let me show you what these people came to see. Play some music. Oh, no. and you wonder, is it worth it? Is it worth it for Christy Hemme? On that note, let's check out the viewing party for the latest from Paparazzi Productions. I'm standing here with the... I'll take it here, Latoya. Please, take a seat. Debbie Harry's very proud of your tribute to her. Take a load off. Gentlemen, I've called you here to witness a human documentary. That's right, it's about Eric Young. It's about Miss Brooks. Yeah. Passions flare. Oh, Only for artistic purposes. Like and the price? Free. <laughs> I know, you cheap son of a gun. I may enter this in Sundance. I don't know. I want your opinions, okay? okay. All right. Feast your eyes. I hope you're starving. I'm ready. Roll <laughs> Incoming call. Hello. Hi, honey. Oh, I miss you too, baby. Yeah, and I'm a little nervous. Oh, I've been thinking about this all week, trust me. You have been too? What have you been thinking about? <laughs> yeah, me too. Are you here? You're in the elevator? You slap me, I'll choke slam you, I swear to God. I'll slap the elevator. Go back on. Yeah, baby, I'm still here. I know, I just dropped the phone so my hands are sweaty from being nervous. Okay, you know where it is, right? Oh, you have no idea how excited I am to see you. Okay, hurry up. Love you too. Bye. Okay. Look okay? You guys seem better. Shut the hell up. I wasn't asking you. I know I look okay. Okay. <clears throat> I swear to God, if you ruin this for me, I'll smack the back. AJ Brzezinski. Dale Torbor, I respect you. I respect what you've done. I respect the business that you're a part of. It's a game that very few people get to play. But you have no idea what I've done. Professional wrestling is my life. Now you want to cross the line. You want to come in here and disrespect me and all the fans of TNA. Fine. Step over the line. Come in my ring. You're trying to take away my livelihood by hitting me with chairs? All right, AJ. All right, Dale. You want to cross that line? Then cross it. Step in my ring. Do what I do. And I'm going to show you exactly what TNA wrestling is about. You know, it's not our fault. We came as fans to TNA, watch matches in the front row, and these guys start taunting us, bringing us out, hitting us with chairs. It's not our fault. So guess what? We're going to bring it to Lance Hoyt and Team x -Dine. Well, it looks to me like you're actually not swinging a bat this time, you're swinging steel chairs. Hey, I'm tired of getting blamed for everything. I didn't do anything wrong. He pulls out Dale Torborg out of the ring, my buddy Dale, my backup, Lance Hoyt. I hit you with a chair twice. I haven't seen Eckstein here one time. We've been here show after show. Where is he? Is he scared of me? What's whoa, the deal? Whoa. You want some more of us? You really want some more of this? How about you back up? Oh! oh! I just stepped into your world. Now meet my good friend, Johnny Damon. He's on my team now. You come this Sunday, I can't wait for you to step in my world. Let's go, Johnny. Ladies and gentlemen, the following is a special contest scheduled for one fall. Introducing first, he is accompanied by 2005 World Series champion, AJ Brzezinski, from New Jersey, Dale Torborg. Ready for the base brawl matchup? We see AJ Brzezinski, labeled as the most hated man in Major League Baseball, tearing up that Team Eckstein t-shirt. And then Dale Torborg just took the baseball bat to a Lance Hoyt TNA action figure. Just absolutely destroyed it. I mean, the, the attitude that these two have displayed, the disrespect they've shown to David X9, especially after he won the 
World Series MVP, and they were talking about his children's book and talking about heart and what it takes. Disgusting how these guys have been acting against David Eckstein and Dean Eckstein. And his opponent, accompanied by 2006 World Series champion and MVP, David Eckstein from Dallas, Texas, Bruce Boyd! I think David Eckstein's got his game face on, and we're not even in spring training yet. Oh, and this guy, there's one thing about David Eckstein. I mean, the fact that he's here shows you the kind of heart that he has. I mean, he was the guy, I mean, the thing about the World Series, the guy that couldn't seem to buy a hit for a few games, and then you couldn't get him out all the way to the end. And one thing you can never say about David Eckstein is that he doesn't have heart. It is going to be in this base brawl matchup. Dale Torborg, one-on-one -on -one against Lance Hoyt. Brzezinski, obviously, in the corner of Dale Torborg. Eckstein in the corner of Lance Hoyt. And you know, Dale Torborg, the strength and conditioning coach for the Chicago White Sox, he's no stranger to the ring. Dale Torborg, former professional wrestler. You might remember he was the kiss demon in WCW. Lance Hoyt, great leg extension. Drop kick right in the face of Torborg. Well, you got to wonder how rusty Torborg is. And we know Lance Hoyt has, has really taken this personal. He really wants to shine in this, and look at how he's just taking it right to him. And I want to mention something else, though. And everybody asks me, everybody that I know, Don, is A.J. Pruszynski really that big of a, yeah, you know what? Yeah, we're on pay-per-view, you can say it. A-hole. Uh -huh. and, and it's like, I, yes! I can't believe it, you think it's all an act. A.J. Pruszynski, there's a reason why he's the most hated man in baseball. The guy really is a jerk. Oh, and Pruszynski, with the distraction, but Lance Hoyt could have nothing to do with that. Gonna go for Torborg. Oh. Go blow, low blow. Low blow by Krasinski. That enables Torborg to hit the snap suplex on Lance Hoyt. Not even surprising when you think of it coming from him. And you see David Eckstein trying to explain to the referee what's going on with the referee, trying to keep Eckstein from getting in the ring. And, oh, oh, God! Krasinski just threw that big Lance Hoyt right into the rail, showing a good, incredible strength right there by A.J. Krasinski. Krasinski, outside, continues the assault on Lance Hoyt. David Eckstein at that point, when he was with the referee, well, he wasn't doing his man Lance Hoyt any favors. That distraction with the referee away from the scene enables, yes, Team Persinski to take control of this matchup. Well, I mean, David Eckstein wouldn't know. He thinks he's doing the right thing there. He thinks telling the referee to go over there, and all the referee is seeing is somebody trying to get in the ring that doesn't belong, and all that did was, like you said, Mike, it cost him. I mean, it, it cost Lance Hoyt because A.J. Persinski took advantage of it. Obviously, Dale Torborg taught him well, because, I mean, you saw what he did. The kind of things that could cause major damage, throwing into the rails, into the ramp, I mean, anything that he could do to hurt Lance Hoyt, A.J. Pruszynski did. I keep flashing back to that situation recently on Impact. We saw it all go down. The problems we've seen between these two. Johnny Damon, even from the Yankees, sticking up for World Series MVP, David Eckstein. You talked about when they tore up the children's book that David Eckstein has. Even his brother, Rick Eckstein, got involved, if you'll recall, D.W. Oh, absolutely. It was just the biggest sign of disrespect you've ever seen. And, uh, oh, you saw Torborg there trying to get him up into that suplex. He was able to get him over the top. And there is David Eckstein's brother that you were talking about. And I believe he's a strength and conditioning coach as well. Torborg, yeah, you can see how cocky he is at this point, cranking back on that rear chin lock while Przinski screaming from the ringside area right in the face of Lance Hoyt. So far, it's been obvious that A.J. Przinski has knows his game plan, I think, a lot better than Team Hoyt and Team Eckstein do because they've been following it to perfection, working together like they've been a tag team for a while, but big Lance Hoyt, let's face it, he definitely has the advantage of being fresh, but Dale Torborg showing great signs in there. Gonna go for the pin, but as Torborg goes for the cover, you see that Lance Hoyt, his shoulder was outside the ring, and Andrew Thomas can't even start the three count. I think you made a great point earlier about potential and possible ring rush on the part of Dale Torborg. Let's face it, the longer this matchup goes, it would have to be advantage Lance Hoyt, who obviously wrestling on a regular basis. Oh, then coming off the top, I think he clipped Torborg on the way down.
he, he was not able to just get perfect balance up there, but I like how he realized it, and he realized he could do one of two things. He could have a bad landing on the other side, or he was able to somehow twist that six foot nine frame and able to spin it back. It wasn't a full contact hit on Tormor, but it may be just enough. Swing and a miss with the clothesline. Point goes airborne and drops Tormor. He drilled him with the lariat. Big boot from Big Lance. I mean, the fact that Lance Hoyt would even try a move like that shows you the kind of skill and, and agility that he has for a big man. He's oh, not. No. A, no, Look come at on. this. Prusinski's got a chair Look right out. here. Prusinski. Oh, oh, my God. He's waffling and across the back. Steel chair across the back. Oh, no. Torborg cover. One, two. two. God. Ladies and gentlemen, here is your winner. Yeah, the most hated man in baseball, AJ Brzezinski, with the steel chair shot to the back. They enable what, what, what's Andrew Thomas going to do here? Eckstein was able to convince Andrew Thomas that AJ Brzezinski used the chair. And now Rick he was Ek able to convince him. Rick Eckstein just passed in the steel chair. Yeah, to his brother David. Oh, God, home run shot by the World Series MVP. How incredible was that? Eckstein learned here in the middle of this match. If you can't beat him, join him. And now you see the power of Lance Hoyt right there. And look at the faces of Team Eckstein. And Lance Hoyt now gets the pin. Ladies and gentlemen, your winner, Lance Hoyt. Team Eckstein, David Eckstein, the World Series MVP, along with brother Rick Eckstein and Lance Hoyt. They get their hands raised in victory because Team Eckstein just defeated Team Brzezinski. It was turnabout fair play right there. AJ Brzezinski cheated every chance that he could as he nailed him with the chairs. And oh, you can see Brzezinski wanting to do it, and now Eckstein's got a chair. I mean, let's put a sword fight with the chairs as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, let's check this out. I'm a cup man. I don't like the Cardinals or the White Sox. Oh, let's check out more from Paparazzi Productions and the viewing party. Separate them. So, Kevin. What did you think of the first part of the film? Arousing yet suspenseful, no? Well, the cinematography pacing, much like early Peckinpah. But I must know, Miss Brooks, did she do the deed? I mean, did she get the signature? That's pretty <laughs> much well, where my curiosity is. That's what I want to know. In response I'm to your comment, I modeled my shooting after the flint bones and pulp friction. Huh? But to answer your question about whether or not Miss Brooks got the signature, well, my friend, having some technical difficulties. You're just gonna have to stay tuned for the second installment. Enjoy. Oh, come on. Enjoy. You could have read the spoilers online at home, okay? Enjoy. I swear to God, you ruined this for me, I'll smack the back of my Well, hello there. Aw. You look so nice. Why don't you come a little closer to the bed? Do you like the room I got for you? That's awesome. Yeah? You look so handsome. Is that a new shirt? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. It's very nice on you. The color yeah. brings out your eyes. I got these for you. For me? Yeah. What are they? And chocolates. Get her done chocolates. Yeah. And they're half eaten. Great. Thanks. And then they're missing her. Yeah. Yeah. And what are these? And flowers. They're fake. But they'll last forever, like our love. Oh, that's the sweetest thing anyone's ever said to me. You know what? Let me get two out of these. Oh, oh my, wow, someone's been working out. Look at this six pack. Let's just take that off. Are you ready for the night of your life? Got a little secret to tell you. This is my first time too. I know, I didn't want to tell you I was embarrassed, but it's gonna be special for me too. So remember the little deal we had? Yeah, remember? You um, sign the deal and you can seal the deal. Oh, yeah. Tracy, I don't, yeah. I don't know. My, my friend told me it's not a good idea. Your friend? Yeah. Well, you know what, Eric? I'm pretty sure your friend would do anything to be in your shoes right now. So why don't you just sign this and begin the best night of your life. The War Machine Rhino, the phenomenal AJ Styles. Their battles have been marred by treachery. I think they were going to give the victory to Rhino, and he was making the home. 
One deceptive ending after another. Well, you can see Rhino prepared. AJ sees it prepared. Oh, wait a minute, he just sits back down. But things are about to change because in the Motor City chain match, there is no cut and run. Two men locked together by 15 feet of steel. The lone key hanging on the end of one pole. Rhino's weapon of choice hanging from the opposite side. I may have won, but you are still alive, and I'm going to finish you off. This time, the only way to escape is to survive. The phenomenal AJ Styles battles the War Machine Rhino in a Motor City chain match. Rhino, yes, his choice of weapon. You talked to him about this earlier, because I did. He said, I'm going to use the nightstick, what they use to maintain law and order on the streets of my hometown, the Motor City, Detroit, Michigan. Hence, the Motor City chain match. Referee Earl Hebner, I'll lock them together. There you see the handcuff going to go in place on AJ Styles. The poles on opposite sides of this six-sided ring. The nightstick on one pole and the key to free yourself on the other. Well, and AJ Styles, I mean, it's a good move for the key because he knows that the only way to survive this is to somehow get that key and get unlocked so that he can stay out of the way of the Warmer team. Because let's face it, in close quarters, it's advantage Rhino. No doubt about it. You're right. The size that raw, pure power and strength advantage that the War Machine Rhino brings to this matchup. And now, when he can use the chain to keep AJ Styles close so that he can't run, oh, it's gotta be advantage Rhino here. But bottom line, you still win this Motor City chain match by pinning or forcing your opponent to submit. Earlier right there, as you can see the determination as Rhino just using that strength, keeps pulling AJ in. And just look at the face of AJ Styles. It's something you don't see much. Fear? It's fear. Yeah. Absolutely. He knows that this is not the kind of a match he would have chosen at any time. Now, don't get me wrong. He's phenomenal for a reason. He'll try to find a way to use his agility, somehow use that chain against Rhino. He's going to have to. And look how he finds himself outside of the ring so that he can keep the ropes in between him and Rhino. You and I have seen and you and I have called every AJ Styles match in the past five years. I don't ever recall seeing that look of fear on his face. No. The war machine chasing him, yes, around the six-sided ring. Rhino's got that steel chain and gonna use it here. Sends him into the apron and then chest and shoulder first into the steel guardrail and oh, oh God, just tossed him again. Chest first and neck and guardrail. I'll tell you, Rhino's not gonna hold back at all. He's felt cheated twice now. He's not gonna hold back. 
any way, shape, or form. And you saw AJ Styles doing Who's desperate things, out? literally trying to pull the handcuffs off of his hand. It's not going to happen. You're going to have to get the oh. key. But AJ Styles able to counter right there, keeping Rhino outside of the ring. And it was the perfect counter and perfect timing. That baseball slide style drop kick. Oh, and then using the chain. And AJ just sits back with all of his weight, and Rhino crashes into the side of the ring. Don't be gross. Don't be confused by AJ Styles' tactics, though. He will use his strength. He's one of those guys that, yes, he's smaller than Rhino, but this is a guy who's a workout fiend. He's a guy that we've seen do unbelievable things, unbelievable feats of strength. And AJ Styles, yeah, he's not as strong as Rhino, but any advantage that he can, and listen, he can carry himself just as well as anybody. Did you notice how tentative Styles was? Several kicks from inside the ring, but he very gingerly came through those ring ropes when he went out to the floor because he realizes once you get out here on the floor with this 280-pound war machine, when you're shackled together with the handcuffs and the 15-foot steel chain, realistically out on the floor, you're playing in Rhino's territory. But now look what he's doing. He's, he's positioning the ring post in between them. He knows, oh, Rhino trying to pull AJ Styles into that ring post. AJ gonna have to, to use his brain here right now because the brute force, and look at it, Rhino, just shortening the length. AJ now having to use his feet to apply the pressure and it's just not working. And Rhino, oh man, he's coming around. He's got AJ on the ground. Styles dropped to his back and that allowed Rhino to come through and catch him with the boot. AJ slowly back up to his oh. feet and oh, Rhino just pulled the chain and AJ went shoulder first right into that unprotected steel post. I mean, I know what AJ Styles was trying to do, you know, by, by bringing the chain around the ring post, but it backfired on him as Rhino able to get his feet, his bearings, and then again, in a tug of war, Rhino's gonna win every time. You're right, it backfired big time on AJ Styles now. In control of this matchup is Rhino, quick turnaround here. Boy, of course, they're limited in the moves that they can do with that steel chain, and AJ with the leapfrog, and oh, he's gonna pay. Oh, he is, and he just flips it right over with it. Think about where that chain was rubbing and the pain that caused. Here we go. AJ able to get out just in time. Leg drop leads to a near fall from referee Earl Hebner, but now you can sense that Rhino feels like he's got AJ exactly where he wants him. Shoots him right off into the corner, turnbuckle Styles. Oh, able to get the boot up at the last second. And then comes springing off the middle rope, but he's caught and he's just drilled to the canvas with that belly-to-belly -belly suplex. Oh, it was again. He went right into Rhino in it. And because of the chain, AJ's not able to get the extension that he needs. That's one thing that he does. And you see Rhino setting up for the gore right there. And where's AJ gonna go? He's stuck and here he goes. Oh! Beautiful counter by AJ Styles as he caught Rhino with the drop kick as he was trying to hit him with the gore. Got to give the devil his due. It was the perfect counter from Styles. The charging war machine attempting, yes, his finishing move, the gore, instead met as Styles gets that great elevation and leg extension and drilled him with the drop kick. And now he's taking the steel chain, wrapping the chain around his hand, and he's going to use that as a weapon. Oh, he is, he's just grinding it down and slamming Rhino in the back. And now, using that chain to choke the air out of the war machine. And, and now he's got that chain wrapped around his mouth, yeah, it looks like. That's exactly oh, what he does. Think about that, I mean, he's pulling back on the, on the mouth and the cheeks, and it can split it open as he's using his knee to apply the pressure. Oh, Rhino's gotta be in major pain right there. You're right, using his knee, wedging it between the shoulder blades of Rhino, who, yeah, he's gotta get back up to that vertical base, imperative. For him to get back to his feet, he does, and then Styles uses the chain to catch him with the clothesline. Yeah, wow. we, we talked about it. AJ Styles can beat you many different ways. He knows he can't go up there and, and do the high flying, high risk maneuvers as long as Rhino's on his feet connected to that chain. But you know what? You put him on the ground, and maybe you're able to get up there and get the key. And then if he gets loose, AJ Styles can do what he does best. Yeah, but he doesn't have Rhino sufficiently weakened, I don't think, to climb You're that right. pole because Rhino's getting back up to one knee. And as AJ reaches up there to try and take that key down, he's got to worry about balancing himself and just he's just hanging on for dear life. He's hanging on to the steel pole while Rhino, who has the big size and power and weight advantage, pulls him right back into the ring. AJ tried to wedge that leg around the rope, thinking that could keep him up. And now look at AJ. He realized that Rhino had to use a lot of effort to pull him back down, and AJ just goes right after him with the rights and the boots, and now the kicks to the chest. AJ Styles, I mean, just basically just fighting him right here. Nice kick right there by Styles. Shot after shot, tattooing the chest of the war machine, Rhino. 
with those stiff kicks. And then AJ just surveying the situation here, how proud he is that he's been able to knock Rhino right da back down to the canvas. Neither one of them able to get their, their weapons or keys as they are that are up on top of the poles. Not yet. Rhino hasn't even attempted to go for the nightstick yet. I think he's just felt that with his superior strength, he'd be able to dominate this. But the phenomenal AJ Styles showing us how resilient he always is. AJ fights back, first the series of right hand shots, then the snap mayor takeover back to the wrestling basics. And yes, you are limited in this kind of a match with the high risk style moves that you can do because you're locked together with that steel chain. Well, let's see if he will go high risk. AJ out to the ring apron. You wonder how much that, that chain hinders him. There he goes and he just hits him with that flying forearm. And he hit that with authority. And I mean, he just, Rhino just dropped. You're right, still able to catch the springboard One, move. Two. A nonchalant cover that time by Styles leads to just a two count because Rhino was easily able to roll the shoulder. But well, you can see looking into the eyes of, of Rhino at this point, still a little bit groggy after getting caught with that springboard move. Looks like AJ's gonna go and try and retrieve his key. Boy, he's right there at the key. He just a, a foot, just inches away from the key, but every time he gets up into that corner, oh man, Rhino pulls him right back in and he just did it there. And that was quite a mid-ring collision between the two. I'll tell you another thing, oh, he just pulled him right into the knee, right into the groin. I mean, think of that, he came all the way off the ropes into that giant knee of, of the war machine. And one thing I've noticed is AJ keeps grabbing the wrist. The, the handcuffs, I think, with the strength of Rhino pulling on him, it's grinding into that wrist. You know, that's something you don't think about in something like this. Oh, it's, but it's something that you definitely have to consider. It's just part of the pain involved in this kind of a match. Both men with those big right hand shots. AJ able to send Rhino into the ropes, but Rhino leaves his feet to drop him in mid ring and then catches him with a back elbow. And this is what Rhino has to do. He's shortening that chain even more and not get. Oh, nice shoulder block. Just takes the air right out of AJ Styles right there could be the key here to turn this matchup in Rhino's favor. We can stop on a dime, turn it around, and then just power Styles back first right down to the mat. Oh, what a spine buster that was. And AJ and Styles, look at that. Oh, man, two count only. Styles barely able to roll that shoulder. You know, at a, a time like that, when you're when you're locked in with Rhino, a, a part of you probably wants to just go ahead and let the free count happen. but. That's not the kind of person that AJ Styles is, and Rhino. Really? Really, absolutely. How, how can looks, you say that after what we saw well, from that, AJ Styles when he laid down for the 10 point, count? Good point, We have seen him. We have seen him welch out before. Here comes the war machine. But this Rhino, time he can't get away. He's on the chain, Mike. Right? Good point, <laughs> good point. Rhino able to take that nightstick down. Remember, representing the Motor City, he said, this is what we use on the streets of Detroit to maintain law and order, swinging a miss with the nightstick. And AJ gonna try and fight back. Oh, God, there's that chain right between the legs of Rhino. Didn't have the strength like Rhino did to turn him upside down, but he's able to grind that, pull that chain Ouch. right through there just in case. And yeah, it doesn't take, uh, we all know what we saw. And we know, know it had to hurt. And oh. now AJ's got the nightstick. And he takes that baton and drives it right across the back. Got to use the, the end of that nightstick, and now he's going to use it as a weapon to try and choke the life out of Rhino. And he is. He's just applying the pressure right there on the neck of Rhino. And I mean, this is really, if you'd have told me that it would be at this point, at this time of the match, I would have said no way. I would have figured the chain. Full advantage, Rhino. And now look at that shot by AJ right to the head. Oh, another man. shot. Just taking the nightstick one shot after another. Ah, oh, swinging the nightstick like a weapon right into the head of Rhino, who is down and really not responsive at this point. And you can AJ hear... just pulling him around with the chain. Again, showing that he's got strength of his own, and now he's definitely got the advantage and realizes that the shots to the head and, uh, of Rhino has worked, and he's now taking the air out of Rhino again. I mean, Rhino has got to be on the point of blacking out. Serious situation, using the nightstick and then all of his weight behind it, right across the windpipe of Rhino, and AJ's got a free ride to take down the key. He's got it in his hand. It's it right here, AJ Styles now. He's gonna be able to unlock the cuffs, get the cuffs off right here, oh, and man, then he is is, gonna he's be gonna a, have all the room to fly. That's exactly it, what a huge advantage this is to Styles here at this point using the key to unlock himself from that from that chain 
gonna come. This is exactly what you said. His opportunity to fly, and he immediately hits the frog splash. Now he's able to do what AJ Styles does, and I mean, think about that force coming from way up in the lights, landing right on the chest of Rhino. If he didn't have the air knocked out of him before, he's got the air knocked out of him now. No limitations from this point in the match for the phenomenal AJ Styles, who what is he doing? jumps out and walking up the ramp. Now, oh, come on. Oh, this crowd letting him hear it. They're letting him know how they feel it. They've seen AJ walk out so many times. They've, and you can see referee O'Hudner trying to call him back. And I thought he was going to be a chicken, you know what, again. But he comes right back in as Rhino's still not able to get to his feet. Yeah, the opportunity that's presented itself here is way too good for Styles to walk out on this. You've got Rhino minute. absolutely defenseless. You've got him hooked up to the steel chain. And yeah, I'm watching him. He's shortening the chain. And he's going to take the handcuff and, and check that out. He's cuffed it to the ring ropes. And now, look at the thing about it. Rhino has nowhere to go. Oh, AJ, it is advantage. Styles are looking at him dangle the key in front of him. No, just mocking him here by showing him. Yeah, he's got the chain. He's loosened himself from the chain. Oh, oh nah. He's just messing with Rhino oh, now. It's just, it's been all about getting into Rhino's head, doing everything against the way that Rhino would think he would do it, and it's just been frustrating, Rhino. Oh, he comes around and hits him with the Pele. Takes it, doesn't even drop the key. Comes right around and just hits him with the Pele, and there was nowhere for Rhino to go. Man, is he full of himself? Oh, look at him, still dangling. That's a, oh, Gore! 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 What, an, Gore! what an explosive move by Rhino. It was a desperation move, but you're right, he gored Styles when he least expected it. He took the win right out of him, but look at how limited Rhino is because he's hooked with that chain. And you can see the keys over there on the far corner, and Rhino doesn't have enough room with the chain to get the key. And then look at Red Free Hunter, he's looking at Rhino right there, and Rhino's pointing at it while AJ's still recovering from the gore. Uh, and uh, Red Free uh, uh, Hunter. Kind of kicks it. Look at that, he kicks it over to him. Hefner just put his hands in his pocket and he just slid the key over to Rhino. Hey, Rhino, he's got the key and AJ Styles. I don't think Styles has any idea. No idea no, no Rhino's clue. getting ready no to get clue. free right here. No idea at all, man. Oh, oh, Rhino is in total control. Another spike buster. Shackles are unloosened. Rhino, yeah, the war machine. He's on the loose. Gonna go underneath the six-sided ring. Gonna bring out a little table justice here. Oh, he's gonna finally get the payback that he's been waiting for as AJ Styles now, between the gore and the spy buster, doesn't even know where he is. Oh, I love the way he's stacking up the table. You know what that usually oh, means. He's gonna set him in front of it and do the final gore. Put AJ in the path and then clear the tracks. Oh. Oh, look at AJ, they'll fight it off. He understands. Oh, oh, what a kick by Rhino. Just picked him all the way up in the air. Then just powers him down. Another belly to belly. Here it is. Measure him. Measure him. Measure him. And gore him right through the table. Get him, Rhino. AJ Get him. Going low. He hit stops. And Rhino goes right through it as AJ went low. And Rhino went high. Oh, no. Cover. One, two. AJ's able to do it again. Perfectly. You can't take that away from it. He was able to move out of the way of the contact. And Rhino hit the gore all right. He gored himself right through, directly through that wooden table. And that enables AJ Styles to win the Motor City chain match. I mean, think about it. It was almost like he didn't have enough time to get out of the way. He just dropped to the ground, and there was nothing Rhino could do because he was already in the air, ready to nail him with the gore. Oh, uh, we gotta see a replay if we can, guys. Let's just take a review of everything that we've seen in this matchup. This is the way we started off with referee Earl Hefner locking the handcuffs to each wrestler. Yes, the 15-foot steel chain in between. What a drop kick by Styles. And then turned it around for AJ Styles, and then he got loose, came off the top of the ball splat, hit him with the Pele, and it looked like all AJ Styles until referee Earl Hefner sends the key, but then there was the ending. AJ drops low, and Rhino pours high. You wouldn't think that quickness would be that big of an element in a chain match, but once they got on loose, AJ able to use that quickness to get out of the way and gain the victory. Yes, 
The phenomenal AJ Styles gets his hand raised by referee Earl Hebner. Styles victorious. Now let's check out more of the Paparazzi Productions viewing party. After witnessing the second part, is there any predictions on what happens next, Sanjay? Yeah, 100%. Goes for it. Okay, Debbie, I mean LaToya. Well, I think Actually, gonna... it doesn't matter. I think the tide is high, but you're still holding on to the 80s. Never mind. Jay Lethal, what do you think happens <laughs> well, next? I keep asking her, but she won't go out. Okay, I don't mean will she go out with you. I meant oh. pertaining to the movie oh. Kevin. Hey, she pulled his shirt off. Is that like the top of a diaper? And is he an astronaut trainer? Is he an astronaut? Well, why don't we just go to the finale and see if he takes her to Space Mountain? <laughs> Here, let me get that for you. There you go. Right but he there. told me I, I shouldn't do this. I, I shouldn't sign this. Okay. 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 Well, I guess. I'll see you later. Huh. Wait, uh, wait a minute. Hey. Yeah. Is there something? I'm sorry. Is there something you'd like? Yeah. You're going to sign it? Yeah. You're going to sign it? Here, let me give you something firm to sign it on. Oh, there's Tiger King. <laughs> yeah. Hey, yo, that was good. Whoa, 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 whoa. You know what? This is going to be a very special night for the both of us. Okay. Okay. Right, do me a favor. No, not yet. Close your eyes. Okay. That's right. Keep them closed. It's like a surprise? Yeah, it's a surprise. Okay. Keep them closed, okay? Do I count? Yeah, no, not yet. Just keep them closed. Okay. I want this night to be a night that you'll never, ever forget. Okay? okay? I'm going to go away for a few seconds and freshen up. One. No, two. wait, wait, wait. Just keep your eyes closed. I'll be back in a few okay. seconds, okay? Okay. Okay. Love you, Eric. I love you. Keep them closed, okay? I love right you. Right back. I love you. I love you. Who loves you? I love you. love me. Yeah, I love you. That's right. That's right. I love, I you. love you. I love you, too. Okay. okay. He did it. I signed. He signed. I did it. You got him to sign. Yeah. Look, look right there. See? He signed. Are you proud of me? Proud? Come on. I, anything for Robert Rudin. Come on, he signed. Look. Let's just say you did a good job. Now, uh, let's get the time going. I'm getting the hell out of here. I guess anything and everything includes blue balls, huh? What? <laughs> Robert. Eric, yeah, I mean, I had more game than that as an embryo. He didn't do anything. What's going, what's going, whoa, whoa. what's going on here? All this pornography going on. What are you trying to do to our society, young man and Mr. Nash? What are you doing? You're trying to destroy our world. I can't calm down. It's my onus to get to the crux of this. Look at what's going on in that camera. Look at that. You're destroying the family. You're destroying the city! You're destroying the county! You're destroying the state! You're destroying the world! I have to straighten you people out one way or another! Are you listening to me? Gary Lynn, against all odds? Gary Lynn, what, what's with you crazy kids nowadays with your Pac-Man video games and your Stickers and balloons and... He's mocking the fact that Jerry Lynn, the exhibition pioneer, is 43 years old, while Chris Saban is just a young kid of 24. Jerry Lynn, he doesn't live in the past. He lives in the future. Coming up in the future, at Against All Odds, he's got an exhibition title shot. A lot of these guys haven't had to live two weeks on a loaf of bread and a jar of peanut butter, sleeping on the entrance ramp of an interstate because you can't afford a hotel. Room. The reigning exhibition champion, Jerry Chris Lynn. Saban. Jerry Lynn on fire! of the Excavation Championship match and against Lama. Look at that! Chris Saban going to the ring and what's he doing? What is that? The pins! The pins! The pins! Wait a minute! Saban comes in and catches the ball at one! Oh, it's a start! Got the pin! Jerry Lynn, he's just past his prime. I am the present. And the future? <laughs> Give me a break. I I'm only 24 years old. X Division champion Chris Saban defends his title against his former mentor and X Division pioneer, Jerry Lynn. And it is time for the first 
of two championship matches. Tonight at Against All Odds, yes, the X Division Championship on the line. It's Jerry Lynn to face Chris Saban. And let's break it down. Let's look at the X Factors in this matchup. Jerry Lynn's last time that he held the X Division Championship, it was back in December of 2002. He looks to recapture the gold tonight and regain the magic. Yes, it all depends on Saban. How far will Chris Saban go? It went so bad recently on Impact that Saban even brought out the adult diapers. Two decade age difference between them. 43 year old Jerry Lynn, the challenger. 24 year old Chris Saban, the champion. Ladies and gentlemen, the following contest is for the X Division Championship. Scheduled for one fall, introducing first the challenger from Minneapolis, Minnesota. He is the former X Division Champion and the X Division Pioneer, Jerry Lynn. Who turned the lights out? What a moment this has got to be right here for Jerry Lynn, Mike. A chance to regain X Division gold. And his opponent from Hill, Michigan, he is the defending X Division champion, Chris Saban! Can you imagine Chris Saban already at age 24, a four-time X Division champion? But this guy will go to any lengths to get inside the head of Jerry Lynn. But you know, I had a chance to talk to Jerry about this matchup earlier today. He said he's not gonna let those kind of mind games get in his way. And he said, look out for the veteran to use the experience edge that he has in this matchup. And that's certainly one that you have to put a check mark in the Jerry Lynn column when you break it down and you talk about the experience factor in this X Division title bout. Well, but there's no substitute for you, Mike. And the longer this match goes, I feel like it's advantage Saban. I mean, we've talked about Chris Saban from the first time we've seen him. Back when we respected him, I mean, he has so much ability, so much God-given ability. And he can do things in that ring that people dream about doing. Jerry Lynn's been one of the people that's helped nurture that talent. Boy, is that ever true. But it's, it's one of those situations where Jerry Lynn, I believe, has experienced a huge edge. And I believe that if Jerry Lynn wants to get this victory and take home that belt, He's gonna to have to do it sooner rather than later in this match because the longer it goes, I believe the youth will win over. For the past year plus, Jerry Lynn sidelined with an injury and he had been working as part of the TNA staff. And you just mentioned it earlier, how Jerry Lynn was so instrumental in trying to help the careers of some of these young X Division wrestlers, just like Chris Saban. And you think Chris Saban has any kind of, of, of respect or any thanks to Jerry Lynn for everything that he's tried to do for his career? No, it's Zip. It, in his mind, Mike, he's done it all on his own. He, everything he's earned, he earned on his own. And, and, and just, just watching Chris Saban bail out of a ring and climb up the ramp like that, it's just, it's hard to watch when you remember that young kid when he first came in, he was so hungry. One of the all youngest, right, this if not the youngest X Division champs, I think of all time. Uh, I'm gonna have to look that up, but I believe he might have been I the think youngest you're right. X Division champ of all time. And we just thought, man, we're gonna be watching this guy for 20 years and be so proud to, to know that we got to see a start. And now you watch him and you just want to take him out behind the barn. You know, we mentioned he's a four-time four X Division champion, but have you noticed that each time that Saban is successful, each time he wins that X Division title, he just gets more impossible to deal with? Well, right now, I think that the tactic he's using is he's making Jerry Lynn work harder than Jerry wants. I mean, it's got to be frustrating to constantly think you're getting close to getting your hands on him, and then there goes Chris Saban out now doing exercises. Jerry Lynn, though, has got to be too strong mentally to let this perturb him. If Jerry Lynn's smart, just let, let the match come to him. Chris Saban wants to do all this stuff. Eventually, he's going to get counted out, so he's going to have to get back in that ring. Let it come to you. Saban and Lynn for the X Division Championship, and hopefully Saban has spent enough time on his bicycle to this point of the matchup that now we're going to try and settle it in the six-sided ring. Lock it up, collar and elbow. Lynn grabs that side, headlock back to the basics. Saban rifling off a pair of shots right into the side, right into the rib cage of Lynn. Lynn springs off the ropes, and he's caught from mid ring with a nice hip toss takeover. But here's the experience edge, able to get the boots up right into his face, and he answers with an arm drag. Nice arm drag right there, and you can see Jerry Lynn able to fake him out. And 
Where Saban spun around thinking that he was avoiding the arm drag again. Jerry Lynn right there, got the knee in place, the foot in place, and he's got him in the headlock. Almost like a little head and shoulders fake that time, wasn't it? Yeah, it was, and now you can see Jerry applying the pressure. And, you know, this has become so personal to Jerry Lynn, and I mean, he's not just gonna wanna beat him, he's gonna wanna humiliate him out here, just to teach him a lesson. Saban breaks the side headlock by stomping on the foot of Lynn, and then he goes right back to the move, maintaining control. Jerry Lynn, known for the cradle pile driver, and how about the cradle shock that we've seen from Chris Saban? Both of these competitors have to do everything within their power to try and avoid those finishing moves that have gained them so many victories here in TNA. Well, they're devastating finishing moves. I mean, you, you, you put them right up there with the Canadian Destroyer and some of the other great things that we've seen. And, and it's just when they hit it, it's always done so perfectly that, you know, they're able to get the one, two, three before the other person can recover. So that's what it's gonna be about right here. One thing about Jerry Lynn, he doesn't respect this for Saban, but he respects his ability, I can tell you that. Now Saban beefing to the referee Slick Johnson, but Lynn had gained the advantage by pulling his hair. He grabs that side headlock and then he poses right for the hard camera. Did you well, see he, that? At least he knows where it is. It's true. Top wrist lock now by Jerry Lynn, and well, Saban takes the shortcut. You can see he got the blonde hair of Jerry Lynn still between his fingers. I mean, it was just looking at that smirk as he looked in that hard camera, you know what I mean? He always knows where every camera is, and just that look from Chris Saban, and just that cockiness. It's just something that must have always been inside of him, but he just waited to the right moment, and now he's just being him, I guess. Saban, Saban just hanging there on the ring ropes, springing up and down on the ropes. Referee Slick Johnson says, let's lock it up, boys. I think this is part of the mind games for Chris Saban, just trying to exasperate. That was from Bob Backman. Yeah, exa exasperate. exasperate. Yeah, sure. Yeah, but just trying to exhaust Jerry Lynn mentally, you know, just constantly doing the little things, and eventually you get frustrated. Oh! Look at this. That's what I'm talking about. Now he's got Jerry Lynn outside. Oh, but Jerry Lynn able to get out of the way, and he gets nothing but mad. <laughs> you know what Jerry Lynn calls that? He calls that hailing the cab. To step right out of the way and watch Chris Saban crash and burn. That was almost like Jerry Lynn just baited him into that. I mean, he let him play his game. Oh, man, Saban, though, quick to kick that rope right into the crotch right there of Jerry Lynn and Jerry Lynn down. You know, I was just going to put over the experience of Jerry Lynn and how important it was, and then he left himself open as he came back in through the ring ropes. Yep, Saban took the shortcut, then follows up with the stomps, a series of boots. Yeah, to the chest and back of Lynn. You can't make mistakes like that with this young kid. I mean, Chris Saban's one of them, when he gets the momentum going, when he really has it under control, he can bury it. He just has so many different ways of beating you. We've seen the hesitation drop kick, a little backbreaker right there. I mean, you, you talked about the cradle shock. I mean, this guy, I mean, he can just do full speed and he'll, he'll face wash you with that foot. He just has so many different things he can do to you. I mean, it would make sense here for Saban to work on the back of Jerry Lynn. Apply all the pressure to a move just like that. Backbreaker, thank you, almost as if on cue. Grabs that near leg, goes for the pin, and Lynn able to roll the shoulder before three. Work on the back of Jerry Lynn, weaken him, and set him up for that cradle shot. Well, look at it. He's got the knee right there to the back again. I mean, hit him with two backbreakers. Now pulling back on the arms and applying the knee directly in the middle of the back, and you can see the pain on Jerry Lynn's face. I mean, look at that. He's just fighting it off. But Chris Saban right now just in total control, and this is his game plan. Moves like this one, this surfboard, where Lynn has to get right back up to his feet and turn this thing around, playing right in to the game plan and strategy of Saban. A series of elbows, and look what he does. Shot right to the back. Double sledge right across the lower back of the challenger. A little shoulder block right there. As Chris Saban right now just seems to be, I mean, I know Jerry Lynn's in great shape, but Chris Saban, oh, he rakes the back right there with the hands. And he's got Jerry Lynn hung up. Oh, God, he's like a no man's land there. Drop Nothing kick. he can do, hanging in the corner. And then the drop kick leads to a pin. And no, just a two count. And where was that drop kick? Right dead center in the back. It's a pretty obvious game plan. It's a pretty obvious strategy from the champion, Chris Saban. Now look at but this. Boy, it's really working to perfection. Now putting all of his weight across, yes, the back of Jerry Lynn. I mean, it's just, like you said, the game plan, he's just applying it to perfection. One back stomp to the next. I mean, look at that, one shot after another. Jerry Lynn has to roll over just to keep him getting hit in the back again. 
What a cocky yes. Oh, he's Good just so happy great. with himself, isn't he? And you're right. What a transformation we've seen in, what would you say, three and a half, four years yeah. that, that we've been watching the career of Chris Saban. Here's Lynn, rights and lefts, using everything within his power, but boy, he's cut off immediately by the Saban knee. Gonna try and fire him across, Lynn puts on the brakes, goes to whip him, oh. and then turns him right around and shoots him back first into the corner. Pure desperation by Jerry Lynn right there, but Chris Saban able to catch his breath and counter Jerry Lynn right there on target. Saban has an answer, drops him across the turnbuckles, and then goes right back to the well one more time, putting the shoulder between the shoulder blades, the back of Jerry Lynn, and there's the backbreaker again. Leads to a pin and two and no. Tough to watch right now when we've seen Jerry Lynn so dominant. Back in the day when TNA started and right now Chris Saban and now he's just adding insult to injury, rubbing salt in the wound right there, choking Jerry Lynn, but he has just applied pressure, hitting with backbreaker after backbreaker, drop kick after drop kick, and now knees to the back. Anything he can do and Jerry Lynn cannot get on track, Mike, at all. Oh, man, and again, vicious assault here. Drilled that knee right into the back of the challenger and the champ just gaining confidence. I mean, just think about this, the more and more that Chris Saban works on that back, if Jerry Lynn does get a chance, he won't have the strength to put him in that cradle pile driver. So I mean, it, his bread and butter. It, the game plan, the strategy on the part of Saban is doubly effective. You know, we've been pointing out repeatedly with these shots to the back, you know, how he's gonna set him up for the cradle shock. But you just make a great point because not only does he weaken Jerry Lynn to set him up for Saban's finishing move, at the same time, he may be taking that cradle pile driver away from the challenger. I mean, Jerry Lynn is gonna have to look for some window of opportunity and take advantage of it. And then he's just gonna have to, to forget about the pain that he's in and do it in a flurry. I told you, the longer this went, it's advantage Saban. And I'm not seeing anything to change that opinion as Jerry Lynn just seems to be getting weaker and weaker with every back shot. And, and you wonder if he'll have enough to be able to even get a three count on for Saban. Oh, rocked him with a right hand in the corner that time. Gonna try and shoot him across diagonally and does. And again, look, back first into the turnbuckle, then all of his power behind the elbow and Lynn just crumbles in the corner. Tough to watch, Jerry Lynn now just taking beating after beating and Chris Saban just owning him. You know, Lynn just really has never gotten untracked no. in this match. No, he, he started out a little bit, but, but it's been all saving. Every mind game Saban's played has worked, and now just anything he can do to humiliate Jerry Lynn in his mind, out with the old, in with the new, and, I, and, and how could you argue with this? We had another shot to the back. What you're seeing right now with Jerry Lynn, a part of you just wants to say, man, I want to remember the Jerry Lynn like I remember it. Saban just dissecting him here. The repeated blows, the kicks. Oh, look at the fire now that Jerry Lynn's showing. Oh, we know he's got the fire. Let's see if he can mount an offensive. Oh, what a drop kick, perfectly. Another drop kick. Oh, this is good to see because it was all Saban early on. And now look at Jerry Lynn. Can he keep it going? And he does it right over the top. Fight through that pain, elevates him nicely overhead. Back body drop, and you saw that time. Saban crashing down back first corner mount. Oh, he spits in the hand, and now he rubs the spit, just like Saban did earlier to him, rubbing that spit right into the eyes. And Jerry Lynn now, just fighting through that pain that Chris Saban has given to his back. Oh, nice spit kick, nice counter by Saban. Boy, did you hear that one? Right into the gut of Lynn. He came charging in and caught nothing but boot right in the midsection. Lynn gonna try and fight back through this, snap it off. Oh, he snaps it off, Mike! Pin, one, two, two, got it, oh! Mm -hmm. Unbelievable, you wonder how much effort that took, but man, he hit it perfectly and showed you. The Jerry Lynn of old, and I mean now, Chris Saban's gotta be thinking, what am I gonna do to this guy? I've given him everything that I have, and he's not stopping at all. Next division, championship, hangs in the balance. The challenger, Jerry Lynn, back on the offensive, but nope, the champ turns it around again. Oh, nice move right there as he elevates him over the top, and oh, Chris Saban so quick. Doesn't miss a beat, Mike, and just grabs the head and just pulls it on the ropes. Oh, quickness was the key, then slingshot into a springboard. And yes, drops with his weight and put that big boot across the back of Jerry Lynn. Man, he has just, boy, it's a giant just, target just right there. just taking a total beating here. Now oh. the kick to the back of the head, and you see a wobbly Jerry Lynn right here, and oh, here he goes, Jerry Lynn. Oh, man. Powerbomb, Power two. two. Oh, Jerry Lynn somehow out of in 
Sting. Sting got that shoulder up just in time. Hell of a power bomb by Saban. Twisting in mid move, and then driving him down back first with extra impact to the mat. But not able to put away Jerry Lynn. There's still some fight left in the challenger. I'm telling you, though, when you think of the, the beating that back took in that power bomb, because he used it. Here he goes. Got him up here in the cradle shock right here. You see Jerry Lynn. Oh, Jerry Lynn. Oh, he rolls him up. Ten, one, two. two. Oh, almost stole one right there. Yeah, with that sunset flip, that's how we beat him on impact recently, if you'll recall. And look at this. Jerry Lynn turns it around. One, two. Oh, oh, just in time man. in the last second. He hit the TKO, and I thought Lynn was going to get the one, two, three. But no, Saban, God, how did he kick out? I don't know if he did. That was so close. Just got the shoulder up in time, and now you see a bull rush, Jerry Lynn, over into the corner. Lynn going to try and fight out of the corner and go for the cradle pile driver. Oh, did you he can't. It he can't. Look at his back pain. He just went out on him. Saban what? drops down, hooks the rope. the rope. Slick Johnson never saw it, and he oh. keeps the title. Ladies and gentlemen, your winner and still X Division champion, Chris Saban. You were right, though. That back, he didn't have the strength to get him up, and he faltered, and Chris Saban took advantage of it. You have to give props to the champ. Chris Saban had a game plan, and boy, did he follow through on that plan. Repeated offensive moves to the back of the challenger, Jerry Lynn. It enables him, yes, to get the pin, but he used the ropes to get the one, two, three for that extra leverage. Let's take a look at the highlights in this X Division Championship matchup at Against All Odds. I mean, oh, there was one backbreaker right there, and you can see him blow up. The drop kick to the back, and this was just a series of moves, and then Jerry Lynn fighting back. Double drop kick right there, and it looked like he was getting some momentum. Snapped off the hurl, Tenrana did Lynn, but no, he wasn't able to put away the champ. This twisting sit-out powerbomb by Saban provided Three another nine. near fall, and he went on, yes, to keep the X Division Championship. And now Chris Saban walking back. I mean, then you see. There he is, Saban celebrating, yes, with that X Division Championship belt. Frustration evident, the hands on the hips of the challenger, Jerry Lynn. He gave a valiant effort, but what a game plan by Chris Saban. Ladies and gentlemen, tomorrow night, the only place to watch wrestling on Spike TV at 9 p.m. Check it out. This is TNA. Great matches, plus the announcement of our newest concept match, which will debut, yes, at March's Destination X pay-per-view. This is TNA, Spike TV, 9 p.m. tomorrow. And you are looking at the dressing room, yes, of the Olympic gold medalist, Kurt Angle. Tonight, Angle to challenge. Christian Cage for the NWA World Heavyweight title, and yo, how about that, Samoa Joe? He will be the unofficial enforcer. Ladies and gentlemen, now entering the impact zone, accompanied to the ring by his chief executive offender, Miss Brooks, he is Robert Roode. Well, never has someone been so appropriately named. CEO, Chief Executive Offender, and look how proud Robert Roode is of what Ms. Brooks accomplished. Yeah, we saw it courtesy of Paparazzi Productions. He's got the contract in hand, and you know what that means. Eric Young signed on the dotted line. Ms. Brooks closed the deal. Well, the temptress was just too strong for Eric Young. You can't blame him. He was thought he was so close to the promised land. And then it was all the evil plan of Robert Roode. Robert Roode is a very happy man. Because you see, my chief executive offender, Ms. Brooks, has finally done something right. And as you've all witnessed here tonight, there is a new acquisition to Robert Roode Incorporated. So ladies and gentlemen, help me welcome the newest member to Robert Roode Inc. Showtime, Eric Young. Well, Robert Roode doesn't hand out the compliments, does he? 
No, he's all about Robert Roode, and I'm anxious to see the demeanor of Showtime Eric Young. I mean, think about it. You think you're going to have your highest moment. You think you're getting ready to experience something for the first time that he probably thought about every day of his life. Anyway, take it away from it. Well, since he realized what was going on in this world. And now I wonder what's in store for Eric Young. I think we're about to find out, courtesy of the man here. behind Come Rude Enterprises. We're Come gonna on, hear directly on, from on, Robert Rude, on, and on, this may on. not be pretty. Oh, you see Miss Brooks? <laughs> oh, bless your heart, Eric. Bless your little heart. <laughs> oh, Eric, you know what? For the last three months, you have had me baffled. I couldn't figure out for the life of me why these people love you. And they do, unconditionally. We've seen it for months from the Don't Fire Eric campaign. I have finally figured out why they love you, Eric. Because when these people look at you, they see themselves. They can relate to you, EY. Because Eric Young, just like you, these idiots oh, are next. worthless. Oh, come on. I mean, they can relate to him. He's the everyman. And Eric Young, just like you, these people will never know what it's like to be successful. Oh, and just like you, Showtime, these morons uh -oh. will never know what it's like to make love to a beautiful woman. <laughs> Let's hear from Eric Young. Let's get his side of the story. You got something to say to me? Huh? You got something to say to me? Say it. Say it. You want to hit me? Hit me. Come on. Right there. Hit me, damn it. Oh, he Come wants on, to. Hit me. Oh, so bad. Say it. That's right. You got nothing to say to me. Because you don't speak unless you're spoken to. You don't make a move unless I tell you to move. You see, Eric, you signed a legally binded contract, and there's nothing you or any of these imbeciles can do about it. Because Eric Young, I, Robert Roode, own you. So you want to hit me? Hit me, damn it! How much can a guy take? But what can he do? He's under contract. You want to break the contract? Do it! Oh, you know he wants because to just... Because I will see fit to take away the two things in your life that you love the most. Your fans and your job. That's right, Eric. I will make sure that you never ever step foot inside a professional wrestling ring ever again. Wow, flaunting the power, isn't he? Oh, he's just. That's it all right, went put to your head plan. down. You're pathetic. Because you know what, Eric? Eric Young, look at me. One way or another, you will find out that it pays to be rude. No question who the boss is here. Eric Young knows he made a major mistake, and now look at this, Robert Roode making him pick up his clothes. And oh, now pointing at him just, to get out of the ring. Just humiliating him here. But he's the boss. Eric Young signed the deal. Now we've got to deal with the consequences of being a part 
of Robert Roode Enterprises. Tough situation for Eric Young. Let's head to our broadcast partner, Jeremy Borash and the NWA champ, Christian Cage. Yet to come tonight, the World Heavyweight Championship will be on the line. Christian Cage defends against Kurt Angle, but earlier we saw it. I gotta ask you point blank. Is your house in order here? You everything together here going into this match? Everything's fine, everything's together. Tell him, Tomko. You know something? You know something? Ever since the pre-show, you and everybody else around TNA, you're like a sewing circle trying to drum up some sort of some sort of drama, like something's going on here when there's not. Tomko and Steiner, it's copacetic. If you're trying to make a story, you're trying to sell some tickets, don't worry about it. You don't have to worry about selling tickets when Christian Cage is in the main event, when Christian Cage is the world heavyweight champion. As for Kurt Angle, everybody knows you're one of the biggest names in this business, that you're a wrestling prodigy and Oh yeah, you'll, you'll not, never let anybody forget the fact that you won the Olympic gold medal with a broken freaking neck. Well, I have a news flash for you, Dr. Evil. This ain't 1994 anymore. This is 2007. And this right here is the gold medal in TNA. The NWA World Heavyweight Championship. And it belongs to Christian Cage. You wanna know if my house is in order, Kurt Angle? You're about to find out firsthand. And at the end of the night, when you look up at that gold medal podium, it's gonna be me standing on top. And if you don't know, now. Champ, champ. Ready for Kurt Angle tonight? That's good. I really think it's gonna be a great match, but I just wanted to remind you of one thing. You see, the NWA World Heavyweight Championship can and will change hands on a disqualification. That means if either one of your two monkeys, Tom Coe or Steiner, lays a hand on Kurt Angle in that match and you get disqualified, then the match and the championship goes to Kurt Angle. You can't, the you best can't. man win. She just couldn't take it anymore. That, that level of frustration. So, yeah, look at this. He's got the beer bottle. And the power went through the level with it. Wait a minute, who just ran by it? What in the world? And Gail Kim and him have 
have just meshed well together, and this is their chance to get a little payback on one half of the former tag team AMW, James Storm. Well, beautifully put. Petey Williams, right before our very eyes, Don, in the past couple of months, has become a man. It all started with LAX and the, the flag burning incident, and then Petey sticking up for Gail Kim and, and, and trying to take the fight to James Storm. Because if you think about it, from the time that AMW dissolved as a tag team, Petey Williams has been there to fight the good fight against Storm, and they're going to start off in this mixed tag team match. And uh, this Tennessee Cowboy, he's just too much. I remember when LAX did everything that they could to force Petey Williams to desecrate the American flag, and he showed us his true colors, and he's just been somebody that you've been loved to root for. And we always talked about that about Petey Williams. Even when he was in Team Canada, as you see him right there, he had so much ability. We always said if he could just get away from Coach DeMore, he'd be somebody that would be easy to follow and root for. And especially when you factor in that flip pile driver that he oh. calls the Canadian Destroyer. And now, most devastating finishing move I've ever seen. The pride of Tennessee, Ms. Jackie Moore. Boy, boy, getting right in the face of Petey Williams. Well, one thing I've heard about her, she's not afraid of anybody. As you can see, she goes for the boot. Petey Williams understands that. Yeah, she's atomic gonna go drop. On that ring. He's, she's gonna have to deal with it. And then tags in Gail Kim, and you know Gail Kim can go. Oh, we've seen her do some things that just defy gravity. And this is no more of a fight, I think, for her. You can see her just physically grabbing Jackie Moore and throwing her by the hair. This isn't about wrestling, I think, of Gail Kim now. It's about beating Jackie Moore up. Yeah, it's really her opportunity to exact revenge. And we've seen these two over the course of the past month or so, Don, fighting just about everywhere, from the women's room to right here in the impact zone. And look at Gail Kim rifle off those right hands. I mean, she just speared Jackie Moore right there and just knocked the air out of her. Jackie Moore, I think the, the pride of Tennessee goes right over the score to make the tag. She's confused because she's seen a fire <laughs> out of Gail Kim. And look at Gail Kim using Jackie Moore as a weapon. Yeah, use her head as a battering ram. Oh, great combination. Obviously, Beanie Williams and <laughs> Gail Kim have put a game plan together. And I mean, it's working to perfect. Petey with those chops to the chest of Storm outside. Knows that you can't beat him outside the ring and rolls him in to try and weaken him here, I'm sure, to set him up for that Canadian destroyer. From outside, Ms. Jackie with the knee. Jackie Moore, the pride of Tennessee, caught Petey Williams from the apron with that knee, and now it's advantage, Tennessee Cowboy. Oh, yeah, James Storm just turned him inside out after that. That's all it took was that little shot by Jackie Moore, and then that was it. Just one little bit of hesitation, and now look at that. Look at the knees and legs. I mean, since Jackie Morris came back here to TNA, I swear I've heard more stories, people talking about how tough she is and the different people she's hurt through the years. Quickly, Williams shot off into the ropes, the double oh, underhook, man. and then a slam right on the back from Storm as he twisted him in mid-move. Sets up a pin attempt, but just a two count from the senior official, Rudy Charles. I think back in the history of James Storm and what a transformation it's been. Back to when he was a part of AMW with Wildcat Chris Harrison, the most exciting tag team, most cohesive tag team that we'd ever seen. The most dominant team in the five-year history of TNA, let's be honest. Jeff Jarrett got involved and they turned and, and it was disgusting to watch, but then it came back full circle and we were able to root for him again and then to see it in like it did with James Moore busting that bottle right into the eye of his partner and to realize that from that point on, James Storm has been on his own mission. Cheap shot from outside. Williams never saw it coming, enables Storm to turn it in his favor. Caught him with a boot and then just gonna try and neutralize him here at this point of the match. Smart move by Storm. Just choking him right there, getting that, that crux of the elbow right underneath the chin and you can see how he's just applying the pressure and you can see the air going out of Petey Williams right here in front of us. Another quick reminder, tomorrow night, Monday night, when you're looking for your professional wrestling fix, yeah, there's only going to be one place to get it. I know what you're going to be watching. Oh, you better believe it. This is TNA two-hour primetime special tomorrow night, 9 o'clock, Spike TV, check it out. Look at what Storm has done. He has, oh, he's got his feet now on the ropes, both of them applying the pressure and I think referee Rudy Charles kind of sensed it, but the bottom line is he's not let loose of that grip around Petey Williams' neck. And Petey Williams is just, I mean, he literally has to go over there to get a tag into Gail Kim just so that he can catch his breath. 
And I don't, you know, I don't know that you want Gail Kim in the ring right there with James Storm. Well, let's see if Petey Williams can get it turned around in the favor of he and Gail Kim. Referee Charles raising the arm, and boy, it just drops right down at two. But it didn't drop down for three, and Petey's gonna get back up to his feet. Oh, nice elbows by Petey Williams. Nice grabbing the neck and flipping him over. And oh, what a kick by Storm. Caught him right off of the ropes, too. What momentum. Drop kick on the butt. Two. Look, look, look at that nonchalant cover. Hooks the near leg and then just lays back on Williams. I mean, only if he was knocked unconscious do you get the three count at that point. Oh, he's just absolutely got Petey Williams where he wants him right now and just toying with him. Just letting him have it at every chance he can. You see Petey slowly trying to crawl over there to Gail Kim, and you, you, you got to wonder what's going through his mind. Now look at this, James Storm got him up. Going for the lie of the storm right here. Exactly there the case. Ah. Whirly bird style move, punctuated. Yeah, with an exclamation point. Oh man, Petey. Dropped him down, back first across that canvas. Look at Petey Williams, just sprawled out there on the man. Now he's gonna turn it in to let Jackie Moore do a little damage. Why not? Petey can't defend himself right now. Absolutely. Elbow drop by Jackie Moore before Petey Williams tosses her off the pin attempt. A pride right there. Kind of a, part, you know, pardon the pun with the pride of Tennessee. Look at her, look at her applying herself in behind him. How about that? Jackie Moore grabbing, the, grabbing the side headlock, just rifling off those shots. That's one way to do it. Backdrop suplex, drops Jackie Moore. What do you do at this point? You get the tag into Gail Kim or you're headed the wrong way. Oh, you can see right now. Oh, he drops down. And I'm telling you, James Storm, he caught that ring post right where it hurts the most. And now Petey Williams just applying it. Oh, man. Petey from outside, slingshot in, double knees right to the chest of Storm. Oh, look at Storm wobble around, fall down on the road. Petey Williams realizes he can inflict a lot of damage. And, oh, went for the back there and scraped him on the side. Just think. He would have hit that. Oh, look at Petey Williams though now with the side rush and leg sweep. Oh, float around, beautiful move. You're right, side rush and leg sweep gonna reel him in. You know what that means. Oh, he wants to hit this Canadian Destroyer, the crowd wants it. You haven't seen the Canadian Destroyer, you haven't seen a pile driver. Reel him in and put him away, Petey, here we go. Here he goes, and here comes oh. the pride of Tennessee, and she rakes the eyes, and now Gail Kim comes in, realizes that she's fresh, and she goes right for the elbows. Series of forearm shots from Gail Kim. Quick reversal shot off into the ropes. Gail, yes. snap off that head scissor. Man, she is something else with that martial arts background also. Showing her strength as he scoops and slams right there, Mike. Off the slam, Gail Kim goes airborne. Drops the knee to the top of the head of the Pride of Tennessee. I'm telling you what, she is on fire right here. She had to be frustrated watching Petey go through what he did, but now she realizes oh! how fresh she is. What a drop kick. What a drop kick by Gail Kim. Good God, what a drop One, kick to the chest. Two. two. Oh, oh, Storm breaks it up just in time. Petey coming across the ring. Forearm shot takes Storm out to the apron. Nice knee right there by Jackie Moore. But Gail Kim able to float behind. Roll it. Where's a referee? Oh, the referee's over there. Oh, come on, Rudy. Rudy, what are you, Rudy, what are you doing? Oh, oh what a just, collision. Did you see that? Right in the storm. Oh, no. This is just wrong. Ladies and gentlemen, your winner is Cowboy Team Storm and the pride of Tennessee, Miss Tricky Moore. Oh, the mixed tag team match and against all odds goes to the duo from the Volunteer State. Yeah, the Tennessee Cowboys, the pride of Tennessee, James Storm and Jackie Moore end up getting the Duke, getting the victory. I mean, Petey Williams, I think, might have even helped cause that match by distracting the referee with Gail Kim had it going on. And then the combination between Storm and Jackie Moore, and it was too much for Gail Kim. He's got that bottle in his hand. Storm has that trademark beer bottle. Oh, he was wanting to do the damage to Petey Williams. What's with him? He just. Anybody that gets in his path, get it, Petey. To take it out. Oh, Go ahead, on, Petey. Petey. Pick it up, Petey. Oh, the referee, As... Charles, telling them don't do it, but I mean, come on, he's got to do it. Oh, oh, look at Jackie. She's just sacrificed herself right on the back of Petey Williams. Comes to the oh, rescue for Storm, and then he just nailed him with a super kick. Unbelievable, right there. As you, as Gail Kim's already out. Now Petey Williams out, and they're just adding insult to injury right here.
I mean, you got the win. Isn't that enough? You have to bring the beer bottle. I know it's your signature move, bringing that beer bottle into the ring. Of the world! What? He just hit the DDT right there on referee Rudy Carl! They're not done with their punishment! You talked about the history of the pride of Tennessee, Jackie Moore, and how she's not afraid to, to dish out the punishment? Unbelievable what she just did! And now, there's nobody out there to help Petey Williams and all they're setting him up for the death sentence. Wow! Wait a minute! It's the Wildcat! He's back! Right there. Look at he just throws her across the ring! He's still got the eye patch! Yeah, the beer bottle that was broken right across his face! Chase him! Get him, Chris! And look at Storm fire on that ring! It's like he's seen a ghost! He can't believe it! No. And there is the Wildcat! He's Chris Harris standing tall in the ring! Look at Storm run! Storm backing up that ramp! Chris Harris is back in TNA! Wow! And look at the look there on the face of the Cowboy! He can't believe it! His former partner for almost five years! Welcome back to TNA, Chris Harris! For months, we haven't seen the Wildcat put on the shelf, sidelined, after taking that beer bottle in the face and Chris Harris returns to TNA and against all odds with a vengeance. Here's the man that was at a crossroads wondering if he would ever be in the ring again. And we still don't know if that question's answered. We still see the eye patch on the eye. Obviously, the damage to the retina is still so extensive. But he couldn't sit around and watch what was happening to Gail Cam. Watch what was happening to Petey Williams. And especially watch what is going on with his former partner, James Storm. Let's shift gears here for one okay. second with the Prison Yard match coming up next. If you think about it in TNA's history, there has not been a rivalry, there has not been a grudge that's been more personal than Sting and the Monster Abyss, and it culminates tonight. Oh, it has. I mean, we found out so many secrets about Abyss, and of course, they originated from prison. When we found out he shot his own father three times in the back, and Sting doing everything I can, I think, to reach this man and get inside his soul. Up next, and against all odds, it's Sting, one-on-one -on -one against Abyss, and they're headed to the prison yard, and against all odds. Abyss, we all have our demons, and I am no different. What is he hiding? You've been holding on to something for 10 years. What happened in that prison? Why were you in the prison? I've been Chris Mark since you said that for six years. What are you hiding? I went down and I found out what you did. And I'm gonna reveal what you did, but I know in doing so, I'm gonna have the wrath of Abyss to pay for. You put three bullets in the back of a man and put him in a coma, and the facts are, he survived. That man was your father. So the question is, why? You opened Pandora's box, Sting. You had to reveal the deepest, darkest secret in Abyss's past. Abyss's eyes, I see a human being, not a piece of garbage like you. Abyss is nothing without me. I use him. He's my meal ticket, you hear me? You are going to pay for your crimes, and we're going to do it one of two ways. Either I can take the videotape of you assaulting and kidnapping me and hand it to the authorities, or you can come to Against All Odds and face Abyss in a prison yard match. Not only do I accept your challenge, but I welcome it. This represents all the evil in your life. This represents lust and greed and deception. Abyss, take a good look. Because this Sunday night, this is the last time you'll ever see this guy. Abyss is an animal that I have domesticated to do my bidding. Sting, you are guilty as charged. And one way or another, you will serve your time. Abyss and the Icon Sting will go to hell and back in a prison yard match. Coming up next year at Against All Odds, it's the prison yard match, Abyss versus Sting, and in some comments made earlier this evening, James Mitchell said Sting at the end of the night, 
It's either going to be him or it's going to be you. You know, if I was afraid of a little bit of fire, I guess I would have run away by now. Like I said before, for the last 20 years, I've had a blowtorch on me. And I'm not going anywhere just quite yet. Abyss, living behind this mask for the past 10 days. <laughs> Your mask for the past 10 days has given me a new perspective. A perspective on your pain and on your guilt. And I've been telling you for the last three months, the only way for you to have a life is to leave the past behind. But I know how impossible that is because you've got the devil himself that's sucking the life out of you every single day of your life like a leech. And I'm going to make you a guarantee that that demon is going to be silenced tonight. Jim Mitchell, you are that demon seed. And tonight, after I lock Abyss in the cage, I'm going to plant you in your own living hell. You wanted end times? You wanted end times? You wanted end times? <laughs> They're here. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time for the prison yard match. The winner is a wrestler who is the first to get their opponent inside the solitary confinement cage and secure the cage door, introducing first. Accompanied by James Mitchell, standing six feet eight inches tall, 350 pounds, the monster, Hoobillis! The impact zone, and against all odds, has been transformed into a prison yard. You look around the building, you see barbed wire screwed around the corner ring post. You see the columns in place with a steel cage attached to those columns and the barbed wire across the top. Yes, Abyss and James Mitchell make their way to the ring for the prison yard matchup. TNA management has informed us that this match will start outside of the arena, outside of the impact zone. And remember the key to this match. You win when you take your opponent and you lock him inside the solitary confinement cage. It's coming down from the ceiling as we speak. It's gonna be hovering up off the ring here. And I don't know if you could see the cage, if we could get a camera to shoot that, so we could show you the cage is hanging right above the monster abyss, and there it is. When someone calls for it to be down, it is going to be in play. But like you said, Mike, this match is going to start outside in the prison yard and be brought right back inside into the prison. Mitchell and Abyss headed outside of the impact zone. That's the starting point for the prison yard match as we finally settle the score between these two. And if you think about it, what has Mitchell said about this match? What has Sting said? They said at the conclusion of this match, one of us won't be around. And his opponent, from Venice Beach, California, weighing 247 pounds. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Sting! Representation of good Sting versus evil Mitchell and Abyss like we've had over the course of the past several months. Sting going to the personal record, finding out that Abyss, yes, had put three bullets in the back of his father. When that news was public, Abyss went absolutely ballistic. Sting knew he would have to pay the price physically. I don't think he knew that he was going to end up getting a fireball in the face courtesy of James Mitchell. One thing I noticed that Sting did was he checked the barbed wire coming in. He made sure to see if this material was kept on it. Checking out all of the prison yard situation around him. He just looked up at the, the, the solitary confinement cage and now Sting still wearing the mask of a bitch. Heads on outside to start this thing in the prison yard and there he goes. And you wonder what's going through the mind, what's going through his mind right now. Inside the arena, that ominous solitary confinement cage hangs above, and Sting jumpstarts the match. 
He took the trash can and he just tossed it right in abyss. And look at Sting go on the offensive here. Series of shots and he's got that six foot eight, 350 pound monster rocket face first. Oh man, right into the trash dumpster. That's the overflow crowd. Standing room only inside the impact zone for against all odds and fans outside. He's trying to get their piece of this prison yard matchup close and personal. How about, oh, oh my God. gosh. Sting just has come out like a house of fire. That's two trash cans he's hit him with. It just came right out and now you see Abyss apply the knee to the gut and was able to stop the onslaught. And with those around the table, you see the steel cages around. You see everything and now, oh look at this, oh, just throwing the table, slamming the table against the dumpster with Sting still on it. Boy, you're right, he slid that table, but you saw that Sting's shoulder went right into the steel dumpster. Oh, advantage, Abyss, and in a hurry, after Sting took it to him with that full court press of the, at the start of this match. Oh, oh God! Just threw him right in! Just threw him right on top! And you see Sting right there, and I mean, this is the way it is, and you see James Mitchell guiding Abyss along, giving him instructions, shouting instructions as the overflow crowd, the overflow crowd watches in disbelief as they can see the destruction already starting. You're right, Mitchell, directing traffic outside. Abyss trying to move the pieces of that steel cage away so that he can put a table into position. Sting, man, dropped right into the dumpster by the monster Abyss and no life seen out of Sting from that point. I mean, think about it. If you could take care of your opponent out here, take him out. Oh! oh, he was playing possum. He sure was. He found something in that dumpster he could use and he hits him again. Sting just fighting with everything that he's got. And now you see Abyss kind of rolling over the table. Here he goes. Oh! oh! He splashes it right on the table. What a move by Sting from the top of the dumpster. Oh, Flying uh, in midair and pressing Look at this down. again if we can. Watch Sting hit, hit this flip. Look at this. Oh, right on top as he caught Abyss. And that's the momentum that Sting's going to need right here. Perfect landing from the dumpster right across the chest of Abyss, and we come back live in the prison yard. Big right hand by Sting Rocks Abyss. I was gonna mention if you could somehow incapacitate your opponent out here and be able to haul him in, call for the cage, you could actually end this match early, but now you see they're bringing it inside. The impact zone is both of them took some wicked shots outside. You're right, as part of the stipulation for this prison yard match. They start outside the arena, they're gonna fight their way in, and yes, remember, you win it when you take your opponent and you lock him inside that solitary confinement cage. What a chair shot to the back. I mean, this is such a different sting than what we grew up with. Yeah, but it has to be against yes. someone like Abyss, especially with the Mitchell factor. It really is. And he, he's reached down and he, he almost has to find a, an antagonistic side of him that oh. he's never had before. Now just throwing him into the steel ring post. I mean, he's done everything he can to kind of save this man's soul. And now not the just, only way he can do it by force. Not oh, just any ring the barbed post. barbed wire. Barbed wire ring post. And that's, well, speaking of barbed wire, Sting underneath the ring, his trademark baseball bat, but this time, yeah, it's wrapped oh. with the barbed wire, and he caught him right in the gut with the shot. Oh, oh right God! The back. Barbed right wire right the across back. the unprotected arm. I mean, look at that bat. It has been wrapped him like by 20 times around. I mean, it's just so tightly woven with barbed wire, and Sting doesn't hesitate for a minute. He oh. knows the pain it's causing, but it's the only way to get through to this guy. Vicious lethal shot across the back, and he's calling for the cage to be lowered. Oh, he wants to put Abyss in that cage so that he can put his attention to James Mitchell, because you mentioned it earlier. They said one of them is not going to survive this match. Sting back to the offensive. Oh, Abyss in trouble here. He felt the barbed wire outside, and then he felt the barbed wire baseball bat as Sting delivered those violent blows. Sting going to open up that solitary confinement cage. Look, oh, look at, at the, the blood. blood, my God. Well, you hit him with a barbed wire baseball bat across the arm, and that's gonna happen. Mitchell up on the apron, and he gets a shot from Sting. And look at this. Sting decides, all right, well, he's got Abyss reeling in pain. He's gonna go ahead. What's he doing? It's like he's, he's pulling, I believe, the belt. I believe that's what he's doing. He's taking the belt that's off the of James Mitchell. Sting's got the leather belt. He's got Mitchell's own belt, you're right, and he's wrapping it around his hand to use it as a weapon, and he just drives it right into the head of Mitchell. I mean, 
mean, he just hauled off and smacked him with the belt buckle on the end of the belt right there that he had wrapped around his hand. And now he's doing it again. Now look at this. Kind of stretching it there. Is he going to, what, choke him with Oh, he's going to strap him. Wow. Swinging the belt around in anticipation of laying in those leather shots. And, oh, man, that one got Mitchell. Mitchell, you can run, but Sting's got that belt, and he's oh. just taking it out out of Mitchell's hide. And, I mean, he took one shot. Wait a minute. He busted Mitchell open with that belt buckle that he had wrapped around him because Mitchell's bleeding on his forehead. Oh, now Sting is taking the belt. He had it wrapped around the neck of Mitchell, but that's the opening that Abyss was looking oh. for. His attention was turned. It was focused directly on Mitchell. That enables Abyss to mount this comeback. And, oh, with the blood just flowing yeah. down the arm of Abyss. You can't forget about a six foot eight, 355 monster like that. But I think he just wanted to put so much pain into Mitchell, he couldn't stop himself, Mike. No, you can't blame him for that, but yes, he did get distracted. Now Abyss is gonna take a table from underneath the ring and slide it into play. Oh, Mitchell down and out, bleeding from the head, and Sting in trouble after the attack from behind by Abyss. He was just so intent on and inflicting pain on James Mitchell that he forgot about Abyss, and Abyss came around the backside, and when you get hit like that, when you're not expecting it, you can see right now Abyss, Oh, As you God. see the blood over the face and the eye of James Mitchell. And Sting is fighting with everything he's got, not wanting to go into that cage. Fired off into the corner. Sting follows up. But Abyss, yeah, got the elbow up. He just tore, look at that. He just tore one of those lights right off that corner post. Oh, oh and Jesus. It and breaks it. Breaks it right over the head of Sting. He just smashed the light. You're right, right across the top of his head. Knocked him out. God. Glass flying everywhere. Got to take this. another look at this. Watch this. He just smashes it. God, right look over at his the head. impact of that shot. A glass went everywhere. Crowd getting crazy here. And man, this is what Abyss needed. It's now Sting is just spread eagle right there out there on the mat. And there he's bringing him up and going to easily throw him into that cage. Oh, all he's no. got to do is shut the door. Oh, that's and lock all he it. has to do is lock that door, close that door, and lock it shut. And Abyss will win this match. He'll win the prison yard match. And Sting going to try and use every ounce of power, every ounce of strength that he can muster. I mean, look at this. He's got his legs, and he's able to use that door to open it. But Abyss takes advantage and smacks him again and knocks him down. Sting has got to get himself out of that cage. You cannot take a chance at that door slam shut and locks on you. We anticipated that the level of violence would be turned up for the prison yard match this. here against all us, but we never thought we'd see this, and now he's got the board, yeah, wrapped with the barbed wire. And they went to, the, they've got every bit of barbed wire you can have in a prison, and they've got it attached to everything. Oh, and Sting still hasn't got himself to his feet. He has just got to get himself out of that cage. That's the key. You got to get out of the cage thing. Get out of the solitary confinement because if he locks that door shut, you've lost the match. Again, Sting up to his feet now. And now look at this. Abyss brings him out so that he can inflict the damage on the barbed wire table that he's got set up. Oh, pointing right at that table. Sting oh, turns it around. Look at these shots from Sting. First the boot, then the series of rights. Off the ropes. Oh, black hole slam. Right into the black hole slam. Oh, it looked like uh, Sting had some momentum and fire, but Abyss just ended it right there. You're not kidding. At the moment when he started to mount that comeback, Abyss cuts him off, hits the black hole slam. Normally, he'd get the pin here as he, he pulls the mask off. That's, that's the original Abyss mask, the black mask, as you see Abyss now sporting the new red mask, but he tore the mask right off the face of Sting. He wants to be able to look at his entire face when he slams his door shut in the solitary confinement cage. And look how close it is. And look at Sting, he's, he's putting his arm through, what, his hand through. That's what you've got to do. You've got to give up your body at this point. But and that's exactly what he's doing. He's put his arm, he's wedged his arm between the door and the solitary confinement cage so that Abyss can't no! close it. Oh, he kicks the door at him. Grazes Abyss and you can see Abyss got caught with that door and hits the ground. Abyss rocked. Here comes Stinger splash in the corner. Follow it up again. Here he comes using the cage to get him some balance and to project himself back out, and here he goes! Scorpion death drop, planted him. Now we, we saw Abyss with the black hole Sam. We see Sting hit that Scorpion death drop. Normally those would be winning moves in a match, but that's not how you win the prison yard no, match. No, it doesn't matter there. You gotta get him locked in that cage, and you see Mitchell now getting to his feet as he's coming to help, and now he's gonna put the Scorpion on him! Turn him over! 
Abyss is in the cage. Yeah, you can tap all you want, Mitchell. It doesn't matter. Oh, but For a again. second time, a second time that Sting was distracted. His attention turned to Mitchell. You can't blame him for that, no. but at the same time, you can't turn your back on someone who's six foot eight, 350 pounds. I mean, it's a situation of the two on one, but look at the pain. Look at the blood uh. down Mitchell's face. I mean, he has taken a beating as he sacrificed himself for his, his abyss right here. And now Abyss setting up that table with Sting still laid down on the mat. What's going through the mind of Abyss? Table put into position. Sting laid out. He's, abyss looks and he sees Mitchell, the blood flowing from his head, laid out after the Sting attack. Oh, look at Sting. He doesn't even realize he's crawled out on the table right now. Obviously, he's been semi-knocked out or knocked out completely. He's not even moving. What's, a, what's, what's Abyss pointing to? He's pointing to the top of the, that, that solitary confinement cage. What is he going to do? Is he going to go up top of it? I, who knows what's going through the, his mind at this point? Yes, he's starting to climb up. And look at this. Sting gets up, and he applies the barbed wire there, and Abyss doesn't realize it. No clue. Now look at this. He <laughs> smacks him in the back. Abyss put in a position here as he climbs up Sting. Oh, he hits him with baseball the... bat right across the back. No. no, no, no. Look out, power ball, power ball, power ball. Right out of the barbed wire, right through the table. Oh, my God. And look at the pain that Abyss is. His body's just twitching and twitching, and the crowd goes crazy. The blood score will take another look at the impact. Oh, my God. Look at it. He is just entwined. Look how hard it is for him to get him pulled out of the barbed wire as it's just sticking into his body oh, every God. which way. And now, as look at this thing has him locked in. There's no way Lock it. Is. Lock the door. And he's done Slam it. it shut. Lock the door. And ring the damn bell. the barbed wire on the table and close the deal. The look on the face of Sting as he makes eye contact with James <laughs> Mitchell could be very telling. Think about the situation here. Abyss locked inside the solitary confinement cage. There's nobody to help Mitchell and Sting can dish out more punishment. And look at the pressure he's applying. He's choking him as he's got him with the legs wrapped in and now throttling him. And there's nothing Abyss can do as he reaches out and grabbing nothing but air. Oh, Abyss tries to help Mitchell. Security in and you can hear that the crowd here not thrilled with security coming to the aid, coming to the rescue of Mitchell. But Sting won't stop this assault. Well, this may be a good thing for Sting. He just doesn't realize it right now. Because if you leave him out there, he's just apt to try to kill him. That's how he feels about the devil. What an impact Sting made in the prison yard match and against all odds. He locks Abyss inside the solitary confinement cell. He gets his hand raised, and look what he just did to James Mitchell. Unbelievable, two for the price of one. Mitchell out, Abyss locked in the cage, and Sting victorious. Sting follows through on his promise. Sting closes the deal. We're gonna send it to JB and the challenger for the world title match, Kurt Angle, go JB. I'm in the locker room of the challenger in tonight's world heavyweight title match, Kurt Angle facing Christian Cage. And Kurt, we saw you arrive earlier tonight with Samoa Joe. It seems as though that situation is taking care of itself, at least for the time being. But I have to be honest, I have never seen you more focused, more set on the world heavyweight title than you are right now. It's like you're in a zone. When I first came to TNA, I never took anything for granted. I knew I was the best in the world, but I knew other guys here earned that opportunity. First and foremost, Samoa Joe stood in my way. I saw him as the best. And him and I went at it for three months, and I never beat anyone up as badly as I did Samoa Joe. But unfortunately, he did the same thing to me. There were times where I didn't think I could take the pain the physicality that Joe gave me. But I visioned that gold at the end of the tunnel. That's what tonight is all about. It's about seizing the opportunity. And that's what I'm gonna do. 
I'm going to seize the opportunity. Tonight, I have a chance to win the NWA World Heavyweight title. And I will guarantee I will walk out with the NWA World Heavyweight title. And Christian Cage, make no bones about it. You were a great champion. But tonight, you just weren't good enough. My first opponent and against all odds is Kurt Angle. To beat a guy like you, I need to get inside your head. So I've taken the liberty of hiring a consultant. Who is it? Maybe I'll drop you a hint or two. I want to know what's Come going on. on. Don't let that little weasel get inside your head. Christian and Tom Cole with the double team on Angle. And here comes the moment down with the chair. I said I was going to give you a clue. Do you have a clue now? So I do. Might be what Christian Gates was talking about. Could that be the hint? Samoa Joe is not my consultant. I am now the unofficial guest ring enforcer at Against All Odds. But then again, I do have the reputation for being a liar. Who really is better than Christian Cage at playing those kind of mind games? He's definitely inside Angle's head. I will very much clarify my position as unofficial enforcer at Against All Odds. You know, I'm getting a little tired of this array. Because to me, you're nothing but a bold-faced liar. And now the fight's going on in there. Christian Cage, he nails Kurt Angle. Christian Cage attempting to shake hands with Samoa Joe. Oh! There's your answer. Consultant? I don't think so. This is unbelievable. Kurt Angle, Samoa Joe, both laid out. Put AJ Styles to be the consultant. And I guess the world finally figured out that Samoa Joe is not my consultant. But maybe I was lying about it. But I'm not lying about this. Scott Steiner! Scott Steiner! I do have a consultant. Oh, look at him get in his face. Christian Cage and AJ Styles oh, with the addition of Big Papa Pop Scott Steiner. They got the last word. Kurt Angle, Samoa Joe, they're down and out. Kurt Angle has held every championship with the exception of one. Christian Cage, the reigning champion, has defied the odds to remain undefeated in TNA. Samoa Joe, the unofficial special enforcer. It is time for the Against All Odds main event matchup. Yes, with the NWA World Heavyweight Championship on the line, it is time for Christian Cage to defend against the challenge of the Olympic gold medalist, Kurt Angle. We go to the tail of the tape. And when you break down the numbers, there's not much difference. Look at the physical aspect of this match. Slight height advantage for Christian, but the edge in the year pro category would seem to be negated by Angle's experience. Yes, from a pure wrestling standpoint, you would look at Kurt Angle to have the edge in this match. Samoa Joe wants to ensure that Kurt Angle wins that NWA World title matchup so that he gets the shot. Thursday night on Impact, it was revealed, Big Papa Pump is back in TNA. Think of all the championships that this man has held in his career. But one championship he's never had. That's the NWA World Heavyweight Championship. We saw how focused he was. And now he has the comfort of knowing, believe it or not, the comfort of knowing that Samoa Joe is going to be out here or will be available to come out here to make sure that everything is all up. You're right. Total domination as both an amateur and a pro. You even heard it from Christian Cage earlier. Kurt Angle, Olympic gold medalist, 1996 Atlanta, Georgia at the Olympic Games, and he won the Olympic gold medal when he was competing with a broken neck. That's the intensity that Kurt Angle brings to TNA.
by the man that we've been referring to as his insurance policy, Tomko. He brought Tomko to TNA to ensure that he won the NWA title. He did so. He's the champ. He's got Tomko with him. And now it's time to defend the gold. Christian Cage is going to put it on the line. He's going to put it at stake against the Olympic gold medalist. We're going to send it to the ring. Jeremy Morash with the official introduction for our Against All Odds main event title matchup. Ladies and gentlemen, the following contest is your Against All Odds main event of the evening. When the bell rings, the man in charge, TNA official, Mr. Andrew Thomas. And now, live from Universal Studios, Orlando, Florida, it's time for your heavyweight championship main event of the evening. Introducing, first of all, the challenger. He weighed in this morning at 230 pounds and comes to us from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Tonight, he attempts to become the NWA World Heavyweight Champion for the very first time. This is the number one contender and professional wrestling's only Olympic gold medalist. This is Kurt Angle. And now, ladies and gentlemen, introducing his opponent, accompanied to the ring tonight by Tomko. He weighed in at 230 pounds and comes to us from Tampa, Florida, by way of Toronto, Ontario, Canada. This is the instant classic and the NWA heavyweight champion of the world, Christian. Cage. For Christian Cage, yes, it's great to have Tomko as your insurance policy. You brought Scott Stein, Big Papa Pump, back to TNA as your consultant for this match. But you heard what Jim Cornette said earlier. Jim Cornette said, if you are disqualified, remember, in TNA, you can lose your championship on a disqualification in security, as well as referee Earl Hefner headed out here to the ring. They're making Tomko leave. They're sending Tomko out of here. You know, one of the things I noticed, uh, well, conspicuous by their absence, the consultants of Scott Steiner and Samoa Joe. Well, now they're making sure Tomko leaves, and I mean Tomko upset about it. You gotta wonder how this is gonna affect Christian Cage. It's kind of a confidence boost to look out there and see your insurance policy out there outside the ring. Now it's one-on-one -on -one with Kurt Angle, and you wonder where Joe's lurking. And isn't it intriguing that someone who loves to play mind games like Christian Cage and Boy, has he done that from the second that this matchup was announced. Now, all of a sudden, that insurance policy has been taken, that security blanket has been taken away from him. Tom Post sent to the back. Christian Cage gonna have to reach down now and find some in. And you wonder about the events of today, how they've affected him. You wonder how the egos that were obviously coming into play between Scott Steiner and Tomko. I mean, it was obvious that Christian Cage did not have his house in order, even though he was trying to convince us that he did. But we we discussed it. It's, it's, I mean, Scott Steiner's a lightning rod. You've got to wonder if he can play nice with anybody. And Tomko's jealous. He's jealous that now that Scott Steiner has kind of moved in front of him or so in his mind. And obviously, it's going to affect Christian Cage right now because the only person he sees is the Olympic gold medalist in that ring, and that's Kurt Angle. We talked earlier when we broke it down with the tail of the tape about how Angle, yes, on paper, he could out-wrestle Christian Cage, and boy, we're seeing that here. Look at Christian Cage just do everything to, to squirm and move to try to get to the ring ropes as Kurt Angle paint brushes him on the end of total domination here in the opening minutes, out-wrestling. Wait a minute. I mean, I know that music. I do too. Look at the smile on the face of the challenger, Kurt Angle, and the look of concern on the face of the champion, Christian Cage, looks to me like the unofficial enforcer has just made an appearance. Samoa Joe has arrived in Against All Odds. He's got the chair. He's walking down the ramp. 
Pull up a chair, Joe. Get yourself a great ringside seat for the main event title match. I mean, think about this. Kurt Angle knows why Joe's here. He knows why he's here. He knows that he, that Joe believes that there's no way Kurt Angle's gonna lose this one-on-one -on -one wrestling match. And all Joe wants, let's be honest, he wants the title, but he wants to win it from Kurt Angle since he lost the two matches. But that being said, Kurt Angle now knows that Joe is out here, and no matter what Tom Cole or Steiner try to do, he knows that he's got backup. It really has been the plan from the outset. In spite of what Christian Cage said, trying to plant those seeds of doubt in the mind of Kurt Angle. And you remember, Angle thought that Samoa Joe was the secret consultant on initially. So did I. I think the world did. Oh, Angle just relentless here in the early going. He finally found out, Samoa Joe, you're the unofficial enforcer. Yes, Scott Steiner, you're the consultant, but you're right. Samoa Joe is here because Samoa Joe realizes that if there is not that outside interference, that Kurt Angle will out-wrestle Christian Cage. That Kurt Angle will win the NWA title, and there's the ankle lock. Oh, he goes for it early, but unbelievable right there. Christian Cage just scrambles for that rope, and it's smart. You do not want to be in that ankle lock for any long period of time. I can tell you that, and then he just kicks him right in the rail. I've got to, though, ask you, though, when you think about the special consultant, Scott Steiner, Really a stroke of genius when you think of his background, his wrestling background. Who better than to consult Christian Cage? And I'm wondering if we'll see any of that in the ring tonight. Oh man, face first. The Olympic gold medalist Angle takes Christian Cage and drives him right into the steel steps. Angle, total control of this matchup, Don, right from the opening bell, jumps off that ring apron with a double sledge to the back. Christian tries to mount uh, a comeback, he gets one elbow in, Angle cuts him off, sends him right into the steps again, but cheap. the cheap shot, the rake of the eyes by Christian, turns it around. I'll tell you what, that's the brains. Let's face it, Christian Cage, he is, he is, he's wily, he's clever, and that's how he wins these kind of matches. He outsmarts you, and he waited for the opportunity, and all it took was one poke to the eye. Face to face now, the unofficial enforcer leaves his seat. Samoa Joe and Christian Cage, oh, enables Angle to take Christian and drive him back first across the steel post and then dump him on the entrance ramp. Think about that, how effective was Joe there? He never did anything, he never did anything. But it, all it was was his presence that was able to get into the mind of Christian Cage. The world champion right now is in trouble as Kurt Angle can smell victory. Angle rolls Cage into the ring. Gonna try and shoot him off and does, directly into the ropes. High up into the lights with the back body drop. Circling in the ring, you can just sense the confidence. Angle knows a pinfall, a submission win, gains him the NWA World's title off the backbreaker, goes for that pin, gets barely a two count. Christian powers out using his leg strength, Angle right back to the pin again, and again, Christian avoids the three. I mean, Christian Cage, when you ask yourself, how does he win a match like this? Well, number one, he cannot match wrestle with Kurt Angle. That's just not gonna happen. And you hear the crowd yelling, and now Christian goes up top, but again, Kurt Angle right there waiting for him. Anything Christian Cage does, fails. Catches him in mid-move, unceremoniously dumps him right into a pin attempt, and another near fall for the challenger. Boy, Kurt Angle has been in the driver's seat, this time chest first into the front. Oh. oh, man. The timing of Christian Cage. Perfect. Oh, really worked out for him at that point. Able to avoid the contact, and at the same time, the challenger, Kurt Angle, his shoulder met the steel. Well, and that's what Christian Cage has got to do. Got to have a little luck. Sometimes it just takes a little luck. And you think of the damage maybe that Kurt Angle did right there to his shoulder. Kurt, Christian Cage is going to find out, and there's Joe. Not moving. Just sitting on the chair watching. And I think Christian Cage realizes he's going to have to beat Angle one-on-one. Hangman style neck breaker yeah. outside on the arena floor. Oh, man, the back of Angle's head. As you can see, Joe, the concern on his face as he gets up. Don't ruin this. Get off. Screaming at him to get up. Don't lose this. He can see now Christian Cage waving him off, saying, hey, I understand why you're out here, but don't interfere. Joe acting as a cheerleader, providing inspiration to Angle, because bottom line, Samoa Joe wants to face him for the world's title next month at Destination X. Right there, I'm not gonna look at this. Christian Cage turned this thing around. He knows he's got Angle reeling now, applying the feet right to the neck of Angle, taking that air out, taking that oxygen out. He knows that if Kurt Angle can't breathe, he can't wrestle. And that's exactly what Christian Cage wants. Total complexion of this matchup turned when first Angle went out into the steel post, then outside the ring, the neckbreaker by Christian Cage. 
And it has been all the champion from that point. And now he goes first to the chin lock. And as we look over the shoulder of the unofficial enforcer, Samoa Joe, we see how this match has turned in favor of the champion, Christian Cage. And look how he just continues to stay there on the neck. He continues to cut off the wind, the windpipe there and just apply that pressure. He knows that this is a way to beat Kurt Angle. You've got to take the strength out of him. You've got to stamp it out of him so that Kurt Angle can set him up for one of, for his finisher, that unprettier that is so vicious when he hits it dead on. Props to referee Andrew Thomas. You can see how close he's watching Christian Cage to make sure that he wasn't choking Kurt Angle. Oh, he sidestepped him and then flung Angle directly outside onto the arena floor. It just takes a little luck sometimes, like I mentioned earlier. He got out of the way just in time. Angle crashes into the steel ring post, and it's been all Christian Cage. The world champion has it in total control right now. It's been a tale of two matches. Opening minutes, all Angle, and then the Christian Cage comeback. And again, the champ knows, just like the challenger did earlier, you've got to beat him inside the six-sided ring. Rolls Angle back in, and now he's going to get a little bit of payback here. The open hand slap and the mid-ring slam. This scoops him up and slams him down right there as he tries to humiliate him in the process. And now the confidence. You can see the confidence growing right there in Christian Cage, but he misses. And it looks like he caught his face flush on the mat. Exactly what happened. Went for the diving headbutt and went nose first right to the canvas. A little too cocky right there. He posed. Sometimes that's all you need is one second to recover, and that's what Kurt Angle did, and now they're just trading blows. Yeah, check out this exchange. First from their knees, and now both men up to their feet, and Angle unleashes the uppercut, and then the front face lock. Look at him guillotine him. Oh, you just do not want to ever give Kurt Angle the momentum back. Christian Cage made a serious mistake, and you can see Kurt Angle now. With every second, he's getting his breath back, his fire, and his power. Angle puts on the brakes. I think Christian thought he went into the corner. Angle didn't and just tosses the champ down. Here's the pin. One, Here's two. two. Oh, Christian Cage fights it off. Great move by Angle. Hooked the far leg so that Christian couldn't get the ring ropes and get the break on that pin attempt. Now, Angle backdrop suplex. Maintains his grip, maintains his control. He's going to take him up again. You can see right there, Christian Cage realizes, oh, it's got to be a helpless feeling to be in that grip. And now look at this, he's got him in a belly to belly form. Can he slide him over? Oh, here he goes, oh! Oh, he went for that Olympic slam, but he couldn't do it. Instead, Christian floats over, unprettier on the way. Here he goes, he's lined up, oh no! Ankle lock! Oh, he's got him in the ankle lock! Perfect counter. You drop down out of the unprettier, you hook onto the ankle, and you twist and turn, and he's gonna make the, oh man. Okay. Referee life Andrew and Thomas just got climbed over the top of. Christian Cage, life and death to make oh, the ring ropes, oh, and he oh. did. Thomas never saw it, he had his back turned, and he kicked him right between the uprights. Oh, he did, and now he sets him up again, and he hits it. He hits it, and he hit it with a low blow, and then the prettier, and this could be it. No, turns him over. Christian Cover. Cage, Play one, hook. two, oh, just out of instinct. Kurt Angle got the shoulder up. Fighting, wow. fighting on fumes, the challenger Angle got that shoulder, shot it high into the air so that referee Thomas wouldn't count three. The back and forth that this has done, Mike, has just been unbelievable again. A low blow by Christian, though, turned the tie when referee Andrew Thomas was turned away. The unofficial enforcer, Samoa Joe, looks on from ringside as Christian positions Angle across the middle rope and now stands with all 230 pounds across the, the back of Angle so that his neck and his air is cut off with that steel cable pressed against his windpipe. I mean, how many times has he went for the neck and the choke of any sort? I mean, anything he can, and look at Angle, they're slumped in the corner. He just, like, he can't catch his breath. That brought, that brought Joe out of his seat. Did you see that? He circles the ring, he surveys the situation, and then takes his chair once again. Oh, he had to be freaking out when he hit him with that unprettier, but somehow, out of instinct, Kurt Angle able to get the shoulder up, but Christian Cage relentless right now. Level of confidence rising in the champ. The scoop and slam. Oh, what an elbow. Telegraphs the elbow, but it doesn't matter. Oh, now do a I, little Scott you, Steiner on him there. You, you could just see that. You could see this cockiness, this confidence off the charts, and you're right, emulating his consultant. Yes, emulating his consultant, Scott Steiner. You called it DW with the push-ups. 
Oh, and that's just another thing. It's just insult to injury. He just, you, you can tell Kurt Angle knows what he's doing. He just doesn't have the breath right now to, to get, oh, wait a minute. Look at that, though. That's the mat wrestling we talk about. And you see Christian trying to kick him, but no. Oh, Kurt Angle's got the hold. Gonna try and catapult him? He does, right into the corner. Slingshots him face first into that top turnbuckle. Follows up, but as he charges in, Christian gets the back elbow right up into the face of the challenger. Champion headed high risk, going to the top. Oh, look at how quickly though Kurt Angle went up there. Cat-like, he got him and slug him down. Desperation move by Angle, but boy does it pay off. Almost like he took every last ounce of strength to get up there. He did it, he said like a cat. Cat quickness, but what power as he just took the champ and drilled him back first to the mat. I mean, it was a belly-to-belly -belly suplex right there on the top rope. But Kurt Angle, that's how he is. He saw an opening, but you realize it took a lot out of him as well. And now Christian Cage gets to his feet, but there's Kurt Angle. Oh, the German suplex. German number one, count along with us. As Christian gets to his feet, Angle powers him up for a second time. A second German suplex, gonna go for three. Oh, look at Christian Cage just reaching for air. Oh, he hits with the third. And look at this, he's still got the control. He's still got the grip. Is he gonna go for a fourth? He sure is, and he oh, hits it. Oh, my God, a German roll. suplex. I mean, what, Christian Cage is being rattled around here. He's just relentless. He won't give oh, up. Five. five German suplexes in a row. Oh, man, Samoa Joe's got to be happy with what he see. How much more can Christian Cage take? He's You're like ready for down. six, my God. Six of them in a row. Christian, the champ is like a rag doll at this point. He doesn't have anything left, and could he be going for a seventh? Here he goes. He does it. He hits it. Seven German suplexes. Oh, yeah. Wow. They're scoring along at ringside. One, One two, two, done. No. Christian Cage able to get the shoulder off. What else does he have to do? Uh, Seven consecutive German suplexes. Look at this. What? AJ Styles. What the hell? Oh, come on. And you can see Samoa Joe coming around. We've seen AJ Styles align with, with Christian Cage in recent weeks, even tag team partners on impact, and the unofficial enforcer, Samoa oh, Joe. He, while that was going on, Christian Cage, the referee's attention was heard. What happened? And Christian Cage hit Kurt Angle with a chair. What? He hit him with a chair, I saw it. I never saw it. He went, they went flying by us. It was out of camera range. But Christian hit him with a chair. He got a chair and hit him with it. And the referee was watching the action between AJ and Joe. From the top, frog splash. No. One, One two, two. Oh. oh. You've got to be kidding. Able to get the shoulder up. There's no way. Resilience beyond belief wow. by Angle that time. Listen to the crowd, they realize he took the chair shot, he took the frog flash, and he's still out of pure guts. Willpower got that shoulder up, Mike. I'm even amazed that Christian can come back so quickly after those seven Germans, but you can sense he's getting frustrated. Here it comes. Oh, he's got the unprettier oh, again, no. and he hits it again. And Joel comes back down. Ten, two. two. Oh, oh, man, only two. Oh, look at this, Christian Cage can't believe it and he pushes him, he just knows he had him. There's no way Kurt Angle can win this, can get that shoulder up, there's no way. And now look at Joe, motioning for Christian Cage to come right out after him. Why not? He wants him to take a shot at him. Get inside of Christian Cage's head. Here it is, ankle lock. Here it is. Oh, he flips it, oh, the God. referee takes a shot into the rail. The referee's knocked out. Joe realizes it. Close line by Christian Cage. The tuck and roll was a great defense of the ankle lock, but the contact was made with the official, and you're right. Referee Andrew Thomas has been knocked out. Samoa Joe, the unofficial enforcer, trying to revive him. Oh, and he has peripheral vision, enabled him to see Christian Cage coming around the side, toss him back in. Throws him back into the ring right there. It's Joe doing what you, you would want him to do as an enforcer, and now, Kurt Angle taking the straps off, and Christian Cage is going right into it. Oh, man. Here it is. A little two-gun salute, and there it is. Olympic slam, but again, the referee's down and out. It does, and there's nothing that the ref can do. He's out down. Samoa Joe takes Thomas, throws him into the ring. One, One two. two. Oh, Christian Cage just in time. Angle on the verge of victory. Just this far away from winning the NWA World's Heavyweight title for the first time. 
Wow, Mike. It's exhausting. What a matchup. And again, you see Christian Cage right the eyes, and he oh, hits the referee. God. Andrew Thomas takes another shot. Angle ducked. Christian hit him. But boy, Christian never saw that clothesline coming. Wait a minute. Tom 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 comes Tom in Tom the side no. God. Throws him in the steps. Unbelievable. And now he gets into the ring. Give him the German suplex. Come on, Kurt. Oh, think, think of the energy, though, that, that Angle's expending with these German suplexes. He's tossing Tomko around. There's a, Scott Steiner. Scott Steiner just came by the table. He's got that pipe. He's got that lead pipe. The referee, and keep in mind, nobody's actually made contact. What more does Kurt Angle have to overcome out there? They think about it. They've thrown everything at him. Every obstacle tossed in his path. Samoa Joe clotheslines Tomko to the floor. Samoa Joe doing everything he can to help Kurt Angle win this match. And now Joe says, finish it. I'm doing what I'm supposed to do, finish it. Christian in the back of his mind has to realize what? that a disqualification loss would cost him the title as Joe and Angle come face to face. What are we watching? Oh, ah! suicide dive! Unbelievable! Joe takes out Tombo and Snyder, takes them both out. This is unreal. But Kurt Angle again. Right by the broadcast table. Oh. Joe, with those rights and lefts, has Tomko really? Scott Steiner right by us. Oh. Scott Steiner steel chair. Oh. oh, but Joe fights it off and counters it, and then hits him with the chair. Oh, oh and nails Steiner on the head. Look at oh, Joe. Oh, God, two chair shots on the top of the head. Doing everything he can so that Kurt Angle can win this match. But Tom look at Kurt Angle. He's taking everything he can take, and there's nothing left. Tomko and Samoa Joe fight to the back. It's now down to Christian Cage and Kurt Angle for the title. Here we go. Oh, look at this. Pull him up. He's got it. Ankle He's lock. Ankle lock. And the, this, this is, is the second least. time. He's had him. He's had him beat. He should have the belt at this point. He's but again, beat. the referee's down again. He's beating him. I don't know what he goes. He can do. What else can you ask of this man? He's overcome he's every up. Out. Come on. He's tapping out and there's no referee. Damn it, the referee's he's got, got the pipe. pipe. Oh, oh, God. He catches him with the pipe that Snyder brought in. He drilled him right in the shoulder with the lead pipe. Angle had Christian Cage beat on two distinct separate occasions. He had the belt within his grasp, but the referee was down both times, and now Cage tries to revive the official. You can see Cage, he's still limping with that ankle lock with the fly. And now he's woken the referee up. He's setting him up for the unpredictable. And he nails it perfectly. Can Kurt Angle get his shoulder up again? Come on, one, two, no!